the head of basic principles and allied science of Faculty of Indigenous Medicine, University of Colombo, Professor Susanta Molligoda, and head the Department of Ayurveda Medicine and Indigenous Medicine, Professor R. D. H. Kulatunga. I would like to invite Professor Varanjan Karmaratna, the chairperson of NASTEC, and we would like to remind Ms. Priyanta Dizanayaka, the Divisional Secretary and Divisional Secretariat of Tibriga Saya, who extended the great support but unable to present here. And Professor Kamina Gudaratna, the chairperson of Center for Poverty Analysis, Ms. Vajrapani Di Silva, Senior Scientist, Gene Tech, and Mr. Sayad Shami, the Senior Scientist. I would like to invite today's keynote speakers, Professor Suranga Silva, the Professor of Economics and Tourism of Sustainable Tourism Unit, University of Colombo, and the other speakers of this resource panel, Dr. Sulochana Segera, the Founder, CEO, Women in Management, Professor Mahesh Adira Singha, the Vice Chancellor of Univotech, Dr. Padma Sirarana Singha, the Principal Scientist, ITI, and Dr. Himali Di Silva, Senior Lecturer of Faculty of Indigenous Medicine, University of Colombo. Representing the Sri Lanka National Chapter of the Organization for Women in Science for the Developing World, I would like to invite the Vice President, Dr. Hermali Di Silva, the Secretary, Dr. Chaturi Nupe Arachi, Editor, Professor Taranga Thoradenia, Immediate Prince President, Professor Sugandika Suresh, and Assistant Secretary, Ms. Indra Chapa Roberu, to join this esteemed occasion. And one of the participants, please join us in keeping up the traditions. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining the occasion. As we embark on this intellectual voyage, let us recognize within the vast experience of science that lies the poetry of discovery. Today, we gather not just as scholars, but as stewards of the unknown, ready to illuminate the shadows with the brilliance of our collective pursuit of truth. 
Ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, to keep up the formalities and respect the tradition, please rise for the national anthem of the Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka. Thank you very much. To welcome this formal gathering on a more formal note, it's my great pleasure and privilege to invite the President, Dr. Thirina Vanigasekara, to address the gathering.
Good morning. So uh, well, I welcome you all for the Sri Lanka National Chapter of the Organization for Women in Science for the Developing World. Shortly, we say SLNCOWSD Annual Conference 2023. So to, uh, today, our theme is the contribution of the women in science and technology to the technology-driven sustainable tourism industry in Sri Lanka. <clears throat> this is jointly organized by the National Chapter of the Organization for Women in Science for the Developing World in collaboration with the National Science Foundation and UNESCO Organization for the Women in Science for the Developing World and the National Academy of Sciences of Sri Lanka. I warmly welcome Dr. Sepalika Sudhasinghe, <clears throat> Director General, National Science Foundation, Professor Nadira Karunavila, President, National Academy of Sciences of Sri Lanka, and also the founder president of SLNC or WSD, uh, representing Professor Kamal Pereira, Dean, Faculty of Indigenous Medicine, Professor Molly Goda, and Dr. Dhammika Begurumardana, Director General of the Department of Ayurveda, and representing NASTEC, Senior Scientist Said Sahami, Mr. Mrs. Priyanta Disanayaka, as you previously known, she extended her wishes to us as she is not well. She is not representing today. And Professor Kamina Gunaratna, Chairperson, Center for Poverty Analysis. Professor Siti Iqbal, Senior Professor and Member of SLNC OWSD. Dr. Saumya Kumari, representing the Faculty of Indigenous Medicine. And also our speakers today, I would like to welcome the distinguished speakers. Keynote speaker, Professor Suranga Silva, Professor of Economics and Tourism in the Sustainable Tourism Unit, University of Colombo. Speakers of the panel, Dr. Sulochana Sigera, founder, CEO of Women in Management. Professor Mahesh Idir Singha, Vice Chancellor, Univet Tech. And Dr. Padmasiri Ranasinghe, Principal Scientist, ITI. Dr. Himali Di Silva, Senior Lecturer, Faculty of Medi Indigenous Medicine, University of Colombo. And also the Executive Committee of our SLNCO WSD, Vice President, Dr. Hermali Silva, Secretary, Dr. Chaturi Nupiarachi, Editor, Professor Taranga Thora Daniel, and Immediate Past President, Professor Sugandika Suresh, and Assistant Secretary, Ms. Indachapa Ruberu, and all the members of the Council, including the ex officio. Let me brief about this organization. This Organization for Women in Science for the Developing World, or WSD, is an international organization founded in 1987 and based at the Office of the World Academy of Science in the program unit of UNESCO, Tristi, Italy. OWSD is the first international forum to unite women scientists from the developing and developed worlds with the objective of strengthening their role in the development process. Objective of the OW is to increase the participation of women in science and technological research, teaching and leadership. Promote the recognition of the scientific and technological achievement of women scientists. Promote collaborations and communication among women scientists throughout the world. And also increase the access of women in developing countries to the social promote the recognition of science and technology. And also promote participation of women scientists and technologies in the development of their own country and also to increase understanding of the role of science and technology in supporting women development activities. So OWSD is having number of national chapters around the world in all regions, namely Africa region, Asia and the Pacific, and the Arab region, Latin America and the Caribbean. So 
Coming back to the Sri Lanka National Chapter of WSD, Sri was established on the March 29th of 2018 under the umbrella of the National Academy of Sciences of Sri Lanka. Professor Nadira Karunavira was the founder president of our organization. And secondly, this leadership hold with Professor Sugandhika Suresh and third president I'm privileged to speak on today. So these are our office bearers. So I will quickly go through that. And our strategy is more networking and creating platforms for women contribution to the sustainable development. So uh, you can see how we could connect with us. And also thank you for coming today and listening to us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam. Dr. Thirana Vanigasekara, the President of the Sri Lanka National Chapter of the Organization for Women in Science of the Developing World. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome Dr. Gayanidhi Alvis, representing women in logistics and transport. Welcome, ma'am, to this esteemed occasion. So today, we are gathered here for a very specific moment, and we have numerous guest lectures, and we are privileged to have esteemed keynote speakers for today's event. So to start off with sustainable tourism as a growing industry for economic gain and areas of interest for women contribution, I would like to invite Professor Suranga De Silva, the Professor in Economics Tourism, Coordinator of the Sustainable Tourism Unit of the University of Colombo, and to read the citation of Professor Suranga De Silva, I invite the President President of the Sri Lanka National Chapter of the Organization for Women in Science in the Developing World, Dr. Thirina Vanikasekara. Thank you, Charita. Professor Suranga, Dis Suranga Silva. So, Professor Suranga Silva showcased his interest in sustainable tourism, hospitality, and economic through numerous national and in international fora. As the founding coordinator, head Professor Silva could establish the Sustainable Tourism Unit at the Faculty of Arts, University of Colombo, this November 2023. He is a lead trainer at the Global Sustainable Tourism Council, and he obtained his basic degree in Bachelor of Arts in Monetary Economics in 1990 from the University of Colombo. He completed a Master of Arts in International Economics in 1993 and MPhil in Environmental Economics from Maastricht School, Netherlands in 1990. He earned his PhD in Tourism Economics from the Virgie University, Amsterdam, Netherlands in 2022. Professor Silva is a visiting fellow in the University of New England in Australia, Singapore in, and Japan. His contribution for the Sri Lankan tourism sector proceeded with academic and administrative positions as visiting professor for many national and international universities and higher education institutes, including University of Nicholas Copernicus in uh, turn, Poland, European University of Tourism in Italy, Indira Gandhi University, Mayapur, and in India, and Tianjin Maritime College in China, Management Science University in Malaysia, in Thailand, and universities of Rikers in Japan. He introduced tourism economics as a core subject for university education in Sri Lanka through his founding coordination of diplomas and executive diplomas and postgraduate diploma and masters in tourism economics and hotel management. In addition, he is the founding coordinator for sustainable tourism destination management training programs conducted by the University of Colombo with strategic partnership of the UNDP and Global Sustainable Tourism Council. He was the co consultant chairman of the making panel of SCU, SL, NSBM, CINEC, SLTC, S Lacey and Slitham during, Slitham during his tenure to 2011 and 2012 as the Director General, Sri Lanka Institute of Tourism and Hotel Management, Ministry of Economic Development, he won the most outstanding tourism education and training effort award. 
Professor Silva was the consultant to integrated five-year sustainable tourism development plan to Sri Lanka 2019 to 2023 for North Central Province. He was an advisory committee member of National Tourism Policy in Sri Lanka and the chairperson of the National Sustainable Tourism Certification in 2021 and research committee at Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority in August 2023. He was the Director of Staff Development Center at the University of Colombo since 2012 and 2015. Professor Silva introduced the International Tourism Leadership Summit and Sri Lanka Tourism Career Expo and Job Fair in 2021. He was the member of the Working Committee of, on Social Sciences of the National Science Foundation in October 2023. In August 2023, he became the principal resource person for developing the Sinhala English Glossary for Tourism Vocabulary, coordinated by the Department of Official Languages, Ministry of Public Administration. He holds the chairman of Standing Committee for Silk Road Research and Tourism Development Affairs. Association for Sri Lanka China Social and Cultural Cooperation since March 2019. Professor Silva was felicitated by the Association of Sri Lanka China Social and Cultural Cooperation for dedication to promoting research and academic study on tourism relations between Sri Lanka and China since 2017. Since 2014, he was Secretary General of the Tourism and Hospitality Educators and Researchers Association of Asia. Professor Silva has published over 80 publications and was the chief editor of the Journal of Tourism Economics and Applied Research, University of Colombo. He delivered keynote speech in over 20 international conferences and reviewed many national and international pub research publications. Professor Suranga Silva, podium is over to you. Thank you, sir. Very good morning. When I hear the introduction, I should think I should run away from the audience. This is too many things. I feel some sort of shame. But anyway, it's a very good, uh, very good morning, everyone. It's indeed a great honor and privilege for me to deliver keynote speech of this valuable event. Initially, I would like to thank Dr. Thilina Vanigasekara and Professor Dr. Sepalika Sudhasinga and all the organizing committee for inviting me to this valuable, so valuable event. As you know that when, when we see the audience, they are so gorgeous and mesmerizing community. And Dr. Sulojana is here. He's the expert in women management. And uh, what, is the diff what is the relation between women and management and women and science is to be elaborated through her speech. So basically, uh, I would like to say that uh, this is the right time uh, this conference is organized because tourism is a very important sector. And there are three words I would like to, I would like to define but one word I couldn't define well, uh, but uh, let, me, let me see the three words. One is, one is sustain, uh, tourism. So can, can anyone help me? One is tourism. Uh, tourism is known by everyone. It's known by anyone. Ah, yes. Okay. Tourism is a, uh, known by everyone, but uh, when you look at the science and technology, we know that science is evidence-based. At the same time, evidence-based and knowledge-driven, and you are accumulating the knowledge through a systematic approach, and you are delivering the knowledge, and you are using the knowledge to the productions or human development. Tourism is very, uh, actually it is a multifaceted, multidimensional industry. It has a huge impact on economy, society, even the culture, even our politics. When you want to buy, buy a blouse or shirt, you are not going to consider about the culture or nature of the 
where the products are coming. But when you want to go any destinations, you want to check which culture they have, whether the political situation is good, whether the environment is good, whether the people are nice, we have to check all these things. So therefore, this is interconnected, inter intraconnected with different aspects. So tourism can uproot all industries together if properly managed. So when you look at the global tourism, this is the highest income generated in the world. It is more than 10% of total employment. 9% of total GDP is represented by global tourism. But as a Sri Lanka, we have a great potentials. But we should not say that we have potential and potential, keeping the potential as a potential forever. We have to maximize the potential, capitalize the potentials. But I couldn't find the definition for women. I've been trying to find the definition for women. Actually, I, I actually look at my wife and how I can define the wife, women. So it is very difficult uh, definitions. I know you are the best to define the women. <coughs> women is very caring, loving, very responsible, but inside very furious as well, and very dangerous sometimes. Now there are some definitions are called women and the same. In Europe, where I stayed in Netherlands, they said you can't predict women like weather. So anyway, women development, women empowerment, women, women and science are interconnected. Women science, technology, and tourism, when you connect it, we can make a new product. So new product. <clears throat> what kind of new product we are going to use? Look at today how agriculture sector is run by women. So this is what's happening right now. You can see in every, every part of the country. So this is what women are doing. But 1680, Robert Knox, in his book, he has drawn the pictures like this. 160, 80, when he was writing his book, he has mentioned Sri Lankan agriculture led by women. The same thing what is happening right now. So what we are talking right now is sometime the bandwagon, but nobody is going to practice it. Still, our women are using the same thing. I can't say nobody, Dr. Zuloshan, look at me. But, but agriculture sector, when you look at the agriculture sector, we can see that women are actually have the primary, very less productive contribution for the agriculture development. So when you look at the service sector, women are very prominent. But agriculture is the prime necessity for our country. Without food, we have no chance to live. So therefore, we have to look at that aspect as well. Now, when you look at this one, okay, we have been telling, telling, talking, talking, a lot of things, women development, gender equality, and something, something like this. It is like this whole, nobody knows what happened, what will happen, and what should happen, we should clearly understood. So when you look at the total tourism industry, I can tell you that uh, the Sri Lanka labor force is 8 billion. Labor force is 80 million, 8 million out of 20, 20 millions of people. Under this actual women populations, active actual labor force, women representation is out of the 34, 30% 30 of the total women who can work and who can make a contribution to the country. So when you look at this one, we actually, we have a huge number of uh, uh, foreign employment. It is around 20 lakhs. Last year only we left, uh, Sri Lankan left more than 400,000 people left the country. So among them majority is uh, around 30, around 70% of female, those who, left, those who have to leave the country, left the country um, unskilled and un, un, uh, unskilled and uneducated and very low quality, low, low, low uh, productivity employees. That is why uh, people are coming with nails and having the low, various difficulties. So whatever science we are using in women, 
or whatever management we are using, using poor women, must ensure that this, will, this should stop. The majority of women are now in abroad, doing very, very low quality, low productivity, and less paid, and much pain, painful jobs. So where we can put tourism industry? That is also very important. This is what's happening right now. Professional, semi-skilled people like this. When the technology comes, when the management comes, it should be changed like this. Now we are we are actually import, exporting thousands of unskilled women to the rest of the world, but we are importing one CEO from rest other countries. The actual payment for one CEO is much more higher than the thousand of employees we are sending out of the country. So if we can empower our women with that category, if we can train them with science and technology for them to be very high level jobs, so we can generate a huge amount of money. So we are missing that potential income sources. We have been telling that we have a potential and potential, but we never tap the potential and we should we have not created the potential as activities of product. So therefore, this is the challenge we are having right now. How we can create this portfolio into different angles. So now, when you look at the research and development, how much you are spending, it's 74th lowest country. So with our research and development spending, how we can ensure that our country's women can be empowered. What is the impact of the innovations? Innovation create the competitions and go green jobs, partnerships, societies, more specifically, our women can be empowered with new product, new development that can ensure the income generation to the country. What drives the innovation? Value of the innovation must be emphasized. And university and school system must be focused on the innovations. And may, more specifically, the private sector must take the leadership. So this means that innovation is very important. Innovation is driven by various factors. And for that one, women are the most uh, important uh, agent to create the innovation and development of the country. If you look at the global scenario, how much we are spending, US, China, Japan, those three countries are leading the world because of they are spending a huge amount of money for their research and development. That is why they are number one, two, three. So look at the product they are developing. This product's annual income is 10 times or 100 times higher than Sri Lanka national income. So what are the world 100 most valuable brands in 2020? Google, Apple, who run these things? The most, the countries, those who are invest money for research and development. So innovation is very important for that one. The source is how much we are spending money for research and development. So one minute, how much can be connected and spent. So now you can see that this is the scenario of the outside. So now Sri Lanka tourism. I come to the Sri Lanka tourism, which is lifeline of our Sri Lankan economy. Why well, I'm telling that one, we have been given ready-made product. How to promote is the questionable. The most important thing is not the natural attractions and cultural diversity. The most important, the Sri Lankans is to be branded. When day I visited Italy conference, one old lady came to see me with the flower bouquet, with a chocolate. She gave it to me. I asked why she can't speak English. Then she said, 
uh, another person asked, okay, come and explain in. What she said is, when the tsunami come, her and her husband was there in the parallel area of Hikadua. The other people have taken them and keep in the upstairs some buildings, save their life. That is why she came and respect me as Sri Lankan. So this is a country, you are getting the ice cream by chasing. No any other Buddhist countries are providing this type of dance or uh, donations. You go to the island, no Vesak ceremony like us. This is a country where Sri Lankans are showing their hospitality. We are one of one best nations to the hospitality. That is why one reason the tourists to come to Sri Lanka. So Sri Lanka tourism has made rapid recovery, no, no issue on it, but long way to go for it. How we can include the women are the most important. Women-centric, social development could be more resilient, more inclusive, rather than the non-women-centric tourism development. If my mother is powerful, my family is empowered. These, my life has been influenced by three women. One is my mother, but second is my wife. Now my life is influenced by my daughter. She's calling all the time asking, have you got the medicine or something? So dangerous if I say no. So then she's calling until I go to see her medicine. But this is what happened because women is so caring. As long as we are caring them. If you don't care them, they also don't care us. You can't get the respect without having the respect for others. So when you look at the tourism industry, now it is so important. Sri Lanka tourism has been hit by three times. Triple hit industry. One is COVID pandemic. Easter Sunday attack, economic crisis. These are most hit industry, tourism industry in the world. No any industry in the world in tourism, global tourism, this much of suffered. But we are coming back. We are coming back. I can say you 100% Sri Lanka tourism is coming back. Why? You go to down south, you go to Kandy, you go to uh, other part of the country, no hotel rooms available right now. No hotel rooms. Now some travel agents are refusing to bring the tourists because no rooms. UNDP, UNW predicted that Sri Lanka was coming back 2025. But now we exceed almost 2 million. We are coming back this year. Before, this year is the most, this month is the most important. So why then we are, why we are so worried about tourism and development? But it should be directed the right directions. Otherwise, the negative impact which may create cannot be reversed back. So look at how many tourists are coming to Sri Lanka. This is actually, now actually, uh, Dr. Himal is always telling that uh, wellness tourism should be promoted. But what is the percentage the tourists are coming for wellness tours is this much, it's in less than 1%. Visiting friends and relatives is very significant because our Sri Lankan diaspora is coming right now. The pleasure, and when you look at this one, our, our profile of tourists are questionable. How we can promote tourism when the wellness tourism is represented less than 1%? Don't we have potential for it? Yes, we have potentials. There is a problem with we have not tapped yet properly these potentials. That is why Sri Lanka Tourism Development Plan, I, I think uh, the ministry representative may say, we have mentioned the story of under potentials. The strategic development plan topic is a story of untapped potentials. The story is happening since the day we were born in Sri Lanka. So tourism is, everybody is telling that your country is so beautiful, you have a great potential. The bad thing is we are keeping the potential as a potential forever. Now look at how we have been valued by the outside. Lonely planet number one continuously. Sri Lanka is the best island to visit. 2019, 
So other organizations are telling seven, fifth, or different kind of things. For family tours, for wedding, honeymoon, Sri Lanka is one of the best destinations. Most of the tourists, those who are coming for honeymoon and wedding tourism, are very attractive with our cultural rituals. Not like just going to the church and coming back, but here we have different activities, blessing, praying, or different things, even the food. <clears throat> so when you look at the numbers, okay, the, what, why tourists are coming, but how many tourists are revisitors, therefore, they are more than 70% of tourists are telling that they are coming back. So that's a good sign. Feedback. Thank you, Ms. Savitri. She has provided some information to me. And now, Sri Lanka, is. if somebody asks why you are fat and black, I can tell you, okay, when Sri Lankan, this say youth, uh, not youth, mature people, or older people are like this. But if somebody asks why Sri Lanka is still developing nations, I can generalize it like this. I can say that, all South Asian countries are different countries, so, so Sri Lanka is. But these people are not believing it. Because we were the best in Asia some years before. We were the second best. That is why we call underdeveloped areas a Korea. Slums area, we call this like a Korea. Now, can we say like this right now? We called Kondogadabu uh, China, right? So we had a big problem with asylum seekers. At that time they came, we have a separate board systems to prevent them coming to Sri Lanka. But one, when we are looking at today, Gagashman, Australian is embassy is telling that, okay, don't come to Australia. This is a change. But understand that Sri Lanka is the best island of its size in the entire world. This is said by Marco Polo, not by us. So this is good evidence that Sri Lanka has potential to promote tourism. So much and so little. <clears throat> Professor Kotler, when he came to Sri Lanka, when I was the director general, he used this word, Sri Lanka is so much and so, so little. Sri Lanka is a small country, but what we, we don't have is nothing. We are now only one thing we have to create them. There's an investor, I skate in, so it is coming in your future. So now look at these things, beautiful beaches, like this. Beautiful pictures, actually this is very interesting. And this is where community involvement and tourism. The milk, creating the milk rice, or milk curry, coconut milk curry, is an amazing experience for tourists. They would like to pay more money because that experience would not be able to get anywhere in their country because Europe or Middle East, they can't do it. That is why tourism is an experience selling country, industry. This is not the product. You see the product, but this is underneath the product is not important. The experience, whatever what experience you are gaining from this particular activity is the most important. If you can generate more memorable experience, then tourists would revisit more. So that is where we have to, we have to think about how women can be in, involved with their scientific and the very competent and very developed skills. <clears throat> These are some experience. Actually, those pictures I got from the WhatsApp group. Now we have a challenge. We have a huge expectation on tourism. Actually, tourism was a panacea some years before in the global economy. It was a poor attitude. So everybody accepts tourism is the best way to solve their problems. But later, it has become a phobia. Before COVID pandemic, most of the developed countries, especially Italy and Spain, USA, they said, we don't need tourists, we need dogs. Because when they open the door, the tourists are standing there of, uh, of front of the door. They are so disturbed in their life. Therefore, they said, we don't need tourists. 
At the same time, tourist, uh, tourism industry has responsible for creating huge environment and cultural degradations. So therefore, tourism has become a phobia. But fortunately, COVID pandemic again convinces us number is very important. Number is very important because we have no tourists, no business. Now we have expected to jump this ship. Uh, the fish is going to jump into the new bottle. So can he jump? Even he jumps, there is no guarantee that he can survive. Inside of the water is polluted. So that is where sustainable development is coming. We have to check how we can do it. <clears throat> we are called so Sri Lanka tourism, but so vulnerable. More than ever before. Why? Because we are connected with various things. This is the industry, interconnected, interconnected, and multidimensional aspect. So Sri Lanka, so many hubs. We talk about many hubs, we know that different different jargon of political jargons. We have been telling that we have hubs, 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 hubs. I'll be no hubs. We have to buy loans from Maldives, Bangladesh, and they are, actually they were developed, underdeveloped than us. So now, if you really want to make Sri Lanka to Sri Lanka as a hub, one of the key, most important, more doable and sustainable product is such tourism industry, which is going to be the apparel industry, which is going to be the banking, transport, food, medicine, Ayurveda, everything's connected. So now I would like to come to the sustainable tourism curve. What is sustainable? We call three is ecology, economy, and equity. All three must be simultaneously assured. If we only consider about the economic situations, that is not sustainable. If you only consider about poverty elevation, that is not sustainable. Sustainable, we have to address three aspects. So now, biggest challenge we are facing how to balance all these things. Sustainable is caring, sharing, with all the benefit can be derived from the industry. It's like our lung, left side, right side. Now I would like to ask you, okay, if we really want to make tourism more sustainable, we have to look at three main important functions. One is productions. Without production, no income. How we can get the income without productions? If we have income, so we can have consumptions. If we have a good consumption, we have more demand for tourism or any others. So therefore, these trio fundamental requirement must be ensured with any kind of development. If you give them donations, looking without incorporating them into the tourism industry, definitely that tourism economy is not working. So they are our primary, final objective and primary objective must be how to incorporate these resources into tourism industry. I would like to ask a very simple question. Looking at this picture, I hope that Dr. Sulochana will tell you because he is the expert in wind management. What is the highest visible potential in this picture? Let's not say like, yeah, we are not supposed to get a Sri Lankan picture only, right? But the, the highest thing is women, unskilled, unemployed women. But understand they are the culture. Sometimes when we are going to develop the uh, tourism or any other initiation, we forget about the culture. You can't promote microfinancing with this culture. So that is what I create this picture from outside. The culture is very important. Cultures can be the attitude and behavior. So therefore, whatever women-centric, sustainable tourism development, we have to understand what is our culture, specifically women and their attitude and their behavior. So we can expand like this. If you put more technology, if you put more uh, new technology, we can expand like this. Look at this, how these people are doing. They are so environmental concerned. They are not educated. They are so environmental. Kasi bibiwanang, 
Pakat dekat ini dah ada Andrew na. Indah kan lah, tengah dalam tu. Eco friendly, kasih pesalin center. So this is how you look at how these people behave here. But look at log tours and destinations Sri Lanka. Most of the destinations surrounded by local tourists are the most polluted destinations. Foreign tourists, they are clean. They actually regret about the pollutions. When I was a uh, PhD student, I sent some students from there uh, to Sri Lanka to explore Sri Lanka. Then after they came back, they actually not friendly with me. Then I realized, okay, our people might have done bad thing. Okay, definitely that is why they are not happy about Sri Lanka. Then ultimately I chased behind them and asked why you are not happy. The answer is unbelievable. They said Sri Lankans are beautiful. Good Sri Lankan country, so beautiful, so clean, so good, so Sri Lanka. Then what is the problem? The problem is stray dogs. They treat the dogs as a human. Our dogs are knocked down and killed by the road. So therefore, sensitivity is very important. So this is a good example how we can make sensitivity. I'm coming to the sustainable tourism. What is actually sustainable tourism? It is everything for us. Sustainability is we have to think about future as well as the present consumptions. But there is a moral of engagement theory. Three human being would like to have the present consumption rather than future. At the cost, at the discount of huge cost. People have no expectation future, they will have a huge cost, but they will have to eat it right now. Whatever they are doing right now, irresponsible for environment, they would like to continue it because that is the nature of human behavior. That is not the political philosophy. This is a human behavior. But at the same time, there is a, we call theory of re reactions. If somebody says this water bottle is going to be limit for the high-end people, they will be trying to drink this water bottle, even though they don't need it. When something is scarce, we are chasing for that one. When something abundant, we are not going to talk by it. It happened polar bear. Polar bear area has been told by scientists they are going to die because of the climate changes. Then 300% tourists are able to increase that area and polar bear died before predicted because of huge number of tourists are flocking to that place. This is a human behavior. So therefore, if you really want to make sustainable tourism, we had the a small world, big planet. Now we change it as a big world, small planet. The planet is very small. World has become big. Now we have a conjunction of environmental pollutions. So women, now actually when you look at the global tourism, the women is more than 54% of the total employment. And CEO is around 10% of total employment of tourism industry and 15% of senior management level. But do you know what is the percentage of Sri Lanka women enrollment? It is less than 9%. That is why our main strategic target was to increase is up to 10%. So 10%, we could not exceed the 10% of total labor force of tourism industry in Sri Lanka at this moment. How we can run tourism industry without the attraction of women? Women are the most lovable and passionable and caring. Hospitalities connect with women. Now, unfortunately, Sri Lanka tourism is suffering without having women. There's a social stigma. If you fail exam, then you are eligible to go hotel industry. If you fail exams, O-level and A-level, then you have options, one, 
is hotel industry. If your daughter has no job, then you can, you, actually you are trying to keep any other job rather than hospital industry. Because that is a stigma we have, we have been having. So therefore now, it is a great challenge for us to increase the women employment, whether direct, indirect, or induced. Direct is the employment in the hotel industry, but indirect could be the, they can provide some product like Ayurvedic medicines. They can provide that product to tourism industry. Sometimes they can be the investor like homestay operators. So there are many kinds of involvement for women which has, which has not been yet properly tapped. So in addition, I think that there is an increase in women travelers, women holidays. Sorry? We leisure is a business leisure. The tourists are coming for the business leisure. Business plus leisure. Health plus tourism. So that wellness tourism, we leisure, and volu tourism, volunteer tourism, and uh, there could be different type of tourism. But women tourism is growing right now. Most of the women are independent in Europe right now. Malaysia has a big problem right now. The education has created a divorce rate of women. The more the women are educated, the greater the, divorce, the greater number of divorce rate. So therefore, Malaysia is now considering to reverse it back, but it can't be heaven because that is their right. And whether they marry or divorce, that's a human right. But there is a certain equation and positive relationship. The more you educated as a women, the more you get independent, then more you have. Yes. So anyway, right now, there is a certain correlations. But Malaysian, uh, sa Malaysian, some researchers have found that there's a very good positive relationship. I think now it is not that much important because Europe, the divorce and divorce, divorce, divorce rate is also very high. So ultimately what matters is whether you are happy or not and whether children are vulnerable or not. So if the country can protect the children, so but divorce rate of Sri Lanka would be much more higher than this. That's the reality. So anyway, right now, solo tourism are coming. Solo is a single women. They are coming. Their demand panels are totally different. Women tourists are asking. They are coming through the women travel agencies. They are staying in the women uh, dominance hotels or women entrepreneurship hotels. They have a separate requirement. There are some hotels in Sri Lanka. We, you can't go as a, a natural couple. That hotel is more allocated for the lesbian or gay tourist. When you go as a couple, there are there no rooms. But it is hidden in some hotels, actually specifically focused in this area. But this is a, we call pink money, very expensive. You, you have to spend that lot of money and you have a freedom, whatever you can do because everybody is homogeneous. So the most important thing is, though we can't find the employees for tourism industry, the spice mushroom in everywhere. So how it's be happening? Spice is by the respectable job now. They are actually, you know, we know that spice is actually so vulnerable and so socially the girls, they are they actually socially not recognized that much in our society. But we have, cannot find the places, find the female train employees for tourism industry. But spies come in here and there to is a mushrooming, cropping out. So what is the dilemma between these two? Why spies come in? Why we can't find the girls to hotel industry? That shall be research. That is where science is very important. Because of their income, because of their training, because of their uh, young age, or different reasons. Yeah, actually, celebrities and actually now 
though we have not promoted celebrities we are using so now example indian actress also we are using right yeah yeah Yeah, that's definitely. We, we we actually we actually organizing different promotional activities. The I'm not talking about the promotional matter because I'm talking about a sustainable issue. But promotion is very important. Now we have no issue on the promotions of the numbers, but we have a problem with the value addition and value added those who are doing in the country. Now we are inviting the low spending, high low quality tourists. We have a surrounded by Indian and Chinese and some kind of low spending tourists. But their spending pattern is less, and their value con contribution to the country is less. So ultimately, we have crowded cities, crowded shopping market, polluted environment. But the, generating the money is not to the country is very less. Another example I would like to tell you now, right now, the value added is another concept. The even though large number of tourists come to Sri Lanka, how much money we can remain in the society's country is the most important. Therefore, the value added, almost significant proportion of input we are using to the tourism industry is imported. So the greater the number of tourists that are in Sri Lanka, greater income will be taken by India. Because Indian vegetable, Indian foods are coming here. So therefore, it is very important to see how we can increase the tourist arrival through the right promotion by attracting the right customers, right price, right qualities, right distribution. Even now, Colombo city is crowded by tourists, but there are some cities like Jaffna is not crowded by tourists. So therefore, if you really want to distribute the income reasonable way, we have to promote other decisions as well. There are many, many issues, but we are not going to talk about that one. But basically, women-centric sustainable tourism and development is to be ensured if we really want to ensure the women contribution for tourism and development. So how we can create for that one entrepreneurship, skill development, and motivation, destroying the stigma, and these things are very important. So now fortunately, the government has introduced one subject as a tourism. And Sri Lanka has, now government has introduced tourism and food, food uh, studies and different things which are connected with tourism industry. So next generations, after they finish in their level, they will know about Sri Lanka and Sri Lanka tourism. Promoting Sri Lanka tourism is promoting our country. If somebody asks, why should we come to Sri Lanka? Can we have the unique something? We must know it as students, as researchers, why we should come to Sri Lanka. So women-based tourism activities should be one of the key areas. Homestay is a very interesting. There's a five-star hotel, but Roy would like to go homestay and get the experience. Nearby homestays. Now, example, we have good entrepreneurs right now. Dr. Himali, she is running a homestay. She has continuous visitors during the COVID pandemic time. And wellness, careness, wellness, caring, and homely environment is the most important tourist, are the most important for tourists to create the memorable experience for them to back, them to bring back to their country. So therefore, this is the synergy. We look at the wellness, spiritual, agri, culture, rural. The other side, you can see some other things. How we can synergize different requirement typologies of tourism into sustainable women-centric tourism development. So there should be some important things like this. We have to empower the people, train the people, and create the right attitudes, and create the societies, organizations, for them to work together and 
ultimately it is very important to have a good vision and attitude target with them to employ in the tourism industry how people are thinking that working in the hotel industry is tourism no they can provide some food materials training research finding what is the our role right now as a researchers have you have we utilized the potential we have been given by the industry to ensure sustainable tourism development as a researchers the biggest challenge now ngos and other international organizations are facing right now they have no good research finding for them to take a decisions this is industry data driven evidence based industry if we cannot provide the information evidence based research through the evidence based research that is our responsibility we are actually forgetting so as academic and the intellectual we have a great responsibility creating a good database evidence based information for them to take decisions now what is the impact of climate change on rural tourism what is the impact of urbanization on rural tourism what is the impact of covid pandemic and in something like this what is the impact of uh, uh, the customer retention or loyalty or something development so what is the impact so nobody knows about the impact what how many tourists are coming to sigiri and on what they are asking which countries are they are coming what they are seeking what they are expecting next time with where they want to go after going to sigiri nobody knows so i think poor women communities have been doing their job well they are doing their best when you go to the hotels you can see they are providing some agriculture product cloth and their children for hotel industry so the lucky in area is our side this industry is very competitive challenging churning changing so we must ensure as academic to provide them proper knowledge data driven information for them to take decisions therefore we have a huge empty area we can do it but understand that science social sciences archaeology ayurved all are coming as a composite product otherwise we have no tourism asking one product it's a composite product it's a combination of many product so therefore it is our responsibility specifically specifically through the leadership of, of nsf under the leadership of professor dr sevali so doing the right research action oriented evidence based format data research for the decision maker to take the right decisions so now example wellness tourism how many research we have done so far what what data we have we have no data so who should do do we doing the industry professor should do it you know we should do it that is why we have developed the sustainable tourism unit at the university of kerala the first ever unit in university system focus on sustainable tourism so we request you all okay provide your support ultimately we are responsible for making our country better whatever political party comes doesn't matter it's our responsibility if we are not going to develop our country nobody is going to develop our country no other countries have developed any country in the world only the citizen must take the leadership so being academic intellectual if you really want to make tourism industry is more competitive do you know what is the competitiveness of sri lanka tourism global competitive index we are 77th place but india is 34 thailand is 30 around but sri lanka do be atel in that land like no other the best island in the world but the competitive index we are 77th place we were 69 
Now see we are 77 place. We are degrading our competitiveness. So therefore, it is right time for us to be academic, develop together under the leadership of NSF, at least action-oriented, result-driven, outcome-focused research, not just like philosophical research. It would be good for professorship, but the industry level, we need to think about that usable, friend, uh, actually pragmatic research finding. With this message, I wish you all the best. And I know that uh, next, next speakers, Professor Mahesh is there and uh, Dr. Sulochana and their, their uh, wisdom of knowledge is so valuable. And so I wish you all the best. And I wish you a very productive day for your session. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir, Professor Surangati Silva. So if there are any questions for the speaker, uh, there's a minimum time. If you do have any questions, you can raise your hand and uh, Professor Suranga De Silva will be privileged to answer them as well. If you could raise your hand, we can give a microphone to you. Is yes, ma'am. Is there a national plan for tourism that is maintained throughout? Some, I mean, is it, it going to happen? Yeah, now we have been very popular for developing the best national plan for the country since the, before the independence. And no, But no, now no. we have developed uh, under the leadership of Professor uh, Dr. Sefalika, and now national plan we have developed is, is to launch within next year, right? So national plans, actually, I was a member of that part. National plans come in, plan is not madam problem, the implementation is a big problem. Uh, national plan means it is acceptable by all parties. Yes, we actually get the... Whoever comes to power would be committed in yes, implementing it is, those. It is industry interactive uh, national development plan. We actually had different level of discussions. What, whatever government comes, it should be applied. But unfortunately, uh, now recently, government is going to introduce new brand din for Sri Lanka tourism. I know, I don't know why we need a new branding. I can't understand. With so Sri Lanka, World of Asia, land like no other, we have more than ten brand slogans. Spending huge amount of money. Nobody can understand what Sri Lanka is right now because now the new uh, slogan is different things. So is therefore, it, is, it, is it because at this is done at institutional level without getting all stakeholders involved in developing these plans. Is that the issue? No, that is not the issue. We actually all the development plans are coming through the all the stakeholders' contributions, but decision making is the problem. It's like our cricket team. This is like our cricket team. Decision making is the problem. Yesterday, I uh, 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 work with some workshop with the Ceylon Cinnamon. They are very much like to uh, highlight the Ceylon, not the Sri Lankan, because most of the cinnamon buyers, they are recommended to Ceylon Cinnamon. So how can we uh, go with the Sri Lankan Cinnamon or Ceylon Cinnamon? What is the better? Yeah, yeah. now actually... If somebody asks where I'm from, I have been actually experiencing that one. I'm telling Sri Lanka. Then they're asking, is it a part of India? That's what reaction is coming. But what happened when I say, no, no, it's a separate country. We are the country producing Ceylon tea and Ceylon cinnamon. Oh, wow, this is the country. We love it very much. So actually now Sri Lanka should be branded with some very specific product. But unfortunately, we have not done. Ceylon tea, Ceylon cinnamon, Ceylon gems, and Buddhism. Theravada Buddhism. These are the four items. If you really want to make Sri Lanka as a separate destination to visit, yeah, Ceylon is a brand, but we can change actually. India also changed their, Bharata has become India, right? 
So it has become in there. So therefore, this is a problem. We are not marketing the right product in a way to accept by the customers. That's the problem. Ceylon cinnamon is the best cinnamon. Now, when I go to India, Indian people have the patent for cinnamon, right? They have the patent. But many Indian friends are asking me, bring cinnamon from Sri Lanka. Cashew, cinnamon cashew. That is what we are losing, actually. That is the reason we have everything, but we are not doing enough work to make it more marketable. Uh, yes, I'm wondering from the environmental sustainability side, like, uh, is there a system where you uh, benchmark the uh, hotels or the yes. restaurants? We have, we have. Environmental sustainability is basically actually based on the circular economy. There is no end. Cradle, cradle, not cradle, grave. So what happened now, hotel industry, now we actually developed the criteria, actually now, that is National Sustainable Tourism Certifications. I was the chairman some years before, 2017, we actually first introduced, now tourist board is doing that one. So there are some practices, they have to follow on it, minimizing the uh, carbon footprint and communicate with the community and the using the local resources. Sustainable is not just only the environment, it should ensure the well-being of the community as well. Yeah, there are not blacklisting because blacklisting is black is bad word and uh, black money, black currency, everything. But uh, we are encouraging the people to do more rather than blacklisting. Um, yeah, I have a question. Uh, so tourism also has a lot of negative impacts and also on women. So due to tourism, <clears throat> women get pulled into the sex trade. They work in massage parlors. They work in low-paying jobs. So what is your take on that? How can that be sorted out? Because we don't want women to be exploited by tourism. Yeah, actually, when you look at the tourism industry, the environment pollution, considering the tourism industry is relatively better than other industries. That is, we call smokeless, noiseless industry. But when you look at the cultural impact, yes, there is a significant impact. So basically what is happening, we remove the tourism industry from Sri Lanka. Is there any guarantee that there is no prostitution? Most of the AIDS patients are coming from the Middle East. That is what our research have found that. But this is good. But this is the responsibility of Sri Lankan, Sri Lankan and Sri Lankan authority. Now, when you go to Japan, there is a prostitution but there's a well-managed. When you go to Singapore, there's a position well-managed. When I was in Netherlands, there's a registry registered everywhere. Huh? Yes. yes. No, but I don't think we want our women to go into well-managed prostitution. I mean... Yeah, well-managed. <laughs> now, actually, uh, Litra... Really met not the point. Litra Metropolitan University has introduced the prostitution certificate course. So, are you advocating that for tourism? No, I'm not advocating. I'm, a, I'm advocating only community benefit and the uh, sustainable development. But understand that though we advocate or not, something is happening beyond our control. But nightlife is very important for tourism. This is very important. But the managing nightlife is different. But the, when you look at the prostitution, you can't say prostitution is bad. It is coming from the king crime period. But how to manage a prostitution is the most important. How to manage a prostitution? So how many? Actually, I visited one place in India. There's a palace. Palace has nine, 798 rooms. Each room, one queen. Then I calculate how many years if we want to come back. And again, the same lady. It will take more than two or two and a half years. So that is because prostitution is a name wise is not to be considered a bad thing. Even the Metropolitan University has introduced professional prostitution certificate program. X. Madam, I won't tell you a very simple example. There's a research done by one researchers. 
the the women in sri lanka is taking the water pot and taking from different pa from to home then the ngo has decided that okay it's not fair enough they exploiting the women so they develop the tap water supplies to the home but women are so unhappy why because they are gathering places that place and now another example is they have developed a toilet for women for one area then the, for because of the night they can't go to the outside because snakes are there then what happened the women put the old firewood inside the toilet close the door so therefore we can actually say but albeit who is the beneficiaries who is the why it is happening how should it happen is the most important rather than just looking at even the wellness tourism also some issues right some people i met one tourist he was having painful skin and he said okay one wellness center has taken him and put kapuru and other things but he is not happy about that so the Excuse way that me, we are doing uh, is the most I, important i would like to add one more thing to that question uh, with the ground reality where i work with so i have worked with uh, projects on uh, std and the ladies uh, the, the women side of uh, you know the ground reality is very different from what we are talking about if we don't use the word prostitution we can use the word commercial sex workers it's very much there it's a, it is a virtual industry in the country right now and the girls exploited don't have any uh, the licensing or any security yeah, right. so we can't just you know sweep it under the carpet because how they are being exploited we don't have like you said the the academic side even the social studies departments don't do research yeah. the students don't go to ground level talk to these people mm. i mean our research in universities in any level is not the user oriented in our That's universities right. the user is our larger sector of the society but the research is targeted for foreign scholarships yes, and this professorship and, yeah and and professorship and targeting we are now targeting somewhere else so the academics are quite a large uh, portion responsible for the situation that we are facing today because we have not taught our students to go to the ground level talk to the people and see what we need in our country yes so our research has to focus on what we need in our country so if the commercial sex working is happening we can't stop it right because we have the culture this so that i've worked directly with uh, gang rape children you know if i'm to talk i can talk for hours yeah so these things are happening in our country right now and i the paternity cases that we have handled the all kinds of things and how the children the girl and the woman is exploited in our society so even if we don't have or have the tourism industry the exploitation is happening in the ground level yeah. at the ground level so along with the other thing if we are if we, since we are talking about industry tourism industry we have to think about the women who are coming to our country as well there are so many cases that they have been raped they have been molested is the tourist who is coming to our country safe in the other way that's right that yes. is important that's as so well important. yeah those are the ground level realities of our country so okay now uh, thank you very much i want to finish the because of time factor the action is louder than the speech that is very important thank you very much okay. thank you all for the questions and uh, the making the session interactive thank you all and i think charita uh, thank you very much and at the same time i would like to welcome uh, dr sulochana segera the ceo women in management and professor mahesh chitra singh the vice chancellor of edivotec to this esteemed occasion and uh, i would like to invite Dr. Sepalika Sudasingha, the director of NSF, Dr. Tirana Vanikasekara, the president of SLNC, and Dr. Chaturi Nupeyarachi, and Dr. Himal Disilva to join with the presentation party. And I would like to invite Professor Suranga Disilva, sir, please.
confront to receive the token of appreciation from Dr. Sepalika Sudhasingha, the Director General of National Science Foundation. I would like to invite the President of Sri Lanka National Chapter of the Organization for Women in Science for the Developing World, Dr. Thirina Vanika Sekara, to present the certificate to Professor Suranga de Silva. And Dr. Chatur in Upiarachi, sir, there's, there's another letter of appreciation to you, Dr. Chatur in Upiarachi. I would like to invite you and Dr. Himal de Silva as well to join the occasion. Thank you very much, sir. Women in empowering through the tourism industry. So women empowerment is basically focused on sustainable economic prosperity through sustainable tourism. I would like to invite the founder, CEO of Women in Management, Dr. Sulochana Segera. And to read the citation, I would like to invite, as usual, Dr. Thirina Vanika Sekara. Thank you, Charita. So today our next speaker is Dr. Rajini Sulochana Sigera, founder CEO, Women in Management. Dr. Sulochana Sigera is a unique personality recognized among the Sri Lanka's distinguished social entrepreneurs, seasoned trainers, and motivational speakers since 26 years. As the founder chairperson of the Women in Management, we call this WIM, she gifted number of brands, Top 50 Professional Career Women Award, New Generation Award, Top 10 Diversity Champion Award, WIM Pre-Kitchen, and WIM Single Mother to the humanity. On the 27th November 2023, at the House of Parliament, United Kingdom, she was recognized and awarded for her exceptional leadership on gender equality, women, and youth empowerment globally. This was followed by Sigera, Dr. Sigera delivering a speech at the parliament on Sri Lanka women empowerment and also her own story, making it is the first time a Sri Lankan woman speaking on women empowerment at the United Kingdom House of Parliament. Dr. Sigera committed to uplift the living standard of the community, focused on the education and skill development. In the MSME and SME sector, she played a pivotal role as a mentor, counselor, and goodwill investor. She focused on traversing Recording in progress. recognizing the talents of voiceless and influence the decision makers to adapt more inclusive structures at the national level. She certified as an IFC LPI trainer in performance monitoring and assessment. And personality development trainer in Asia. Dr. Sigera contributed to the World Bank's IFC on sustainable private sector investment and the global initiative 5 by 20 by Coca-Cola, focusing on empowering 5 million women. She is a trainer in the Active Citizen Project designed by the British Council and Dr. Sigera was one of the consultants in the advisory committee of the Ministry of Education, Skill Development, Employment and Labor Relations. She chairs the WIM chapters in Sri Lanka, Maldives, Canada, UAE, Malaysia, and the United Kingdom, overseeing the WIM top 50 brand across 23 countries. She made 980 winners globally and 100 scholarships to the children of women-headed households annually. Dr. Sigera pointed to the advisory committee of the Global Equ Equality Standard developed by C GEA in the United Kingdom. She spearheaded the Sri Lankan project for Her Majesty the Queen, 70 years of service and leadership, collaborating with the British Council to establish a network of 100 young women leaders across the South Asia and the UK. Global Women Empowerment Icon Award, Manila, Philippines, the Exceptional Woman of Influencers 2022 as the first Sri Lankan to receive this award, the Global Banking and Finance Award, UK announced Business Women of the Year, Sri Lanka 2020, marked as the first Sri Lankan female entrepreneur and listed on the Global Banking and Finance Review website. She included 
as the 10 most influential people in Sri Lanka 2020 by the LNW website. She received the Globe, the Social Entrepreneur of the Year Award in 2019 at the Asia Pacific Award organized by the Global Entrepreneur Council. She was the recipient of the Global CSR Excellence Award in 2018 and also Women Super Achievement Award in 2017 and Leadership Excellent Award in 2016 and the Most Outstanding Professional Award in 2015. Dr. Sulochana, my pleasure to invite you for the next speech. Thank you. Hi, Bowen, good morning. I feel sorry for Professor for answering all the women-related questions. Um, but um, thank you, Cha, and uh, all of you all for inviting me. Um, so the topic, I think the tourism industry, uh, the best person spoke, the Professor Suranga, who has who knows the academic side, who knows the data. So I'm not going to talk about data or in, anything, but I will speak about why tourism need women in Sri Lanka. And also, as she mentioned, the sex workers. So we don't use uh, legally, Sri Lanka does not use the word prostitution anymore, it's sex workers, even though it's not legalized, the sex workers term in Sri Lanka, that it's not a um, legalized uh, profession. But are we really uh, promoting sex work for tourism or Sri Lanka um, are talking about sex exploit by localists? There is a question as she raised, um, because that's where I work and uh, she said that we have not done research. At the age of 20, uh, one of my research were, even though I was not into anything, I actually worked with sex workers. I spent time with them. I interviewed them. Not enough research, yes. At the age of 20, it was nothing to do with, and even my father questioned me why, why you want to work, go and do about sex workers, because it's something that I really wanted Apart from other things, I want to know why this, why they're becoming sex workers. And uh, it was, maybe it has changed throughout the year. Now it's 2023, but there was always a story. It's We're talking about when you say sex worker, it's not gender serious because we have more men working on sex working now. From If you look at 2020 onwards, we have a lot of boys, men work as sex workers. And if you ask me, the children who's getting more exploited or raped, not girls, boys. Pregnant, you get report. So with that, I'll start because I wanted to correct that. Uh, we have to understand it's humanity, not just women, right? In a woman word, there's a man. But in a man word, there's no woman, right? So we have all genders and everything inside us. Um, what is women empowerment? It's a buzzword that everyone uses. Government use, NGO, INGO use, academic use, everyone use empowerment. But what is women empowerment? Why it's important to Sri Lanka? Why, it's in, why the most selling brand in the world is empowerment, women empowerment. Why is that? M money is invested on this. But are we aware of what is women empowerment is? Women empowerment has nothing to, I think the up, it's covering. If I don't, because of that, it will be covered. But here the curse. Oh, no. Yeah, I'll, I'll put it. Okay. 
So prom uh, women empowerment is promoting women's sense of self-worth, the ability to determine their own choices and their right of influence and social change for themselves and others. Nothing to do with rights and nothing to do with equality, nothing to do with diversity. Those words are for men and women. Equality is nothing to do with women. Gender is nothing to do with women. Inclusivity, nothing to do with women. But what women empowerment means, helping them to understand they always have a choice. We have a choice. Whether we want to become a wife, whether we want to become a mother, whether we want to work, whether we want to stay at home, whether we want to divorce, or whether we want to be single, or whether we want to be succeed. We have a choice. Every human being has a choice. Empowerment means helping them to determine their choices and right to influence the social change, right? And there was a Tamil uh, film. I think all of all Sri Lankans should watch. Uh, it's a true story which happened in India, where a mother who has been working in a state sector, doing a being a clerk in an ordinary job. Our husband is a well-educated person, daughter is going to an international school, speaking good English. They feel so uh, embarrassed about their mother, the way she dressed, the, the way, the normal life. So she, the, the daughter wants to go to USA. So the father and daughter is working on it and ignoring the mother. Then the mother realized that she has to do something after the son, father and the daughter goes. She start doing something very unique where she start to, she does, she, she's living in a, you know, in India, you don't get big houses when you're in the middle uh, cars. So she has a flat. She start growing uh, vegetables, fruits and all that on the upstairs. And she ensured that her neighbors also does it. And then, this goes as a huge business that the president invite her to the president of her office where she first attempt she got fainted because she couldn't speak. Then the second time when we met the president and the father and daughter came back from USA and said, okay, why not you just now you have done it. We are proud of you. Why not you join us in USA? Then she asked from the daughter and from the husband who put an expiry date to a woman dream my you had a dream and you went now when have I have a dream you are putting now your daughter is growing up now your daughter is going to the university and you we have to settle down why not give it up who put the expiry date to our dreams are we that is the empowerment, the choice of us to dream. So this is what the empowerment is. What is women in tourism, WIT? We always say tourism, now we want women to get involved in tourism. What is to women in tourism? To ensure that women are respected. Whether they are local, whether they are foreigners, they should be respected. Recognized, represented, and rewarded in the sector. This is called women in tourism. Not just giving, oh, you making kiribat and you are wearing the red dye hat. It is not women in tourism. Women in tourism is accepting that they have a role, recognize them, and give them the representation and reward in them. That is women in tourism. We have used the common buzzwords just to normalize a women empowerment and women in tourism. Every woman is involved in tourism. The supply chain of Sri Lanka is on women. We are, we are excluding the supply chain. Tourism is nothing to do with being the rooms are being fooled. You know, the number of tourists coming to the airport. That data is always wrong. If whoever comes and feels, we take it. The academic research center is not just a making a research. The students who are coming to the tourist sector, give them a project that is called learn. You know, you practically learning and writing your thesis. We don't have that system. They study. 
Tell them to you okay. One two days you go and spend the, in the airport. Two days you go and spend there. That is what you have to do. We don't have that. We want the documents, the lecture halls, all that. Where is the practical this thing? Where is the skill? Edu the knowledge coming together. How many students are in the airport? This is what we need. I have traveled the way I can. Nothing has been sponsored. I have traveled. When I, I normally per year, more than 15 times I go to Maldives. That's where my second biggest office is there. And I always sit there and think. And always one of the, even though all the immigration officers knows me, they always ask, why are you coming alone? For them, you if you are coming to Maldives, you have to have someone, you have to have family or something. And every day I say, uh, I have a partner here, I have a friend here, uh, my, my uh, boyfriend is here, my husband is here. Trust me, those are the answers I have given them. Because they are asking, they, they don't want you to come unless they say leisure and this thing, but there there's no business and leisure because you know, for me more than three days, I never can stay at Maldives. I've gone to many of the island, but I can't stay. But in Sri Lanka, you can do a lot of things. But are we? Are we really selling it? A country where the tourists were branded, not we never marketed our country. We never sold our country. We actually, the country itself, the people who came here actually marketed. With all due respect to all the officials who are in the tourist board, all the charmers branded themselves, not the country. Right? Sri Lanka was because when, when wherever I had my global events, Maldives, the government of Maldives, tourism board send their video and they say, they pay. They say, can you uh, run this video at your events? I, ha I never ask money. I have to go behind the tourist board to get a Sri Lankan video to run it there. They invest promoting Malaysia. Next year, the global event is happening in Malaysia. From the Malaysian, uh, actually, the global pro, uh, top 50 economic forum was bought by Malaysian University. And the, all the universities, tourists, where are the tourists? And they all are coming together and having it on uh, September 27, 28, 29th in Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur. With the uh, Ministry of Tourism board, they are having it. Why? They know when I bought it to Sri Lanka, I bought 21 countries, women to Sri Lanka. They know they can bring the same there. But are we ready for that? Are we really branding it? How tourism can empower women? So this is where I like, you know, the, we say science and technology. I still re can remember one of the conferences, uh, one of the professors from, uh, I think he's a, he, he was from Japan, but he was living in Singapore. He said, you know, best researchers, when he went to Sweden, one of the conferences, they said the best researchers are done in Sri Lanka by Colombo University, but not for the Sri Lanka, but for other countries. And from that, they produce product and sell it to Sri Lanka. So I was shocked and I was thinking, what are we talking about? What are we talking about? Just because we have a title, just because we have a, so much of history, just because we are having these things, the best country and being on rank, are we really selling our country? How to brand or how to sell a country without we getting sold out? That's what we have to learn. The art of branding and selling Sri Lankan tourism without we getting sold out. Tourism could empower women, giving them the more power to control over what happened in their community and their livelihood. That's where, when you say the women has the control, control means the choice. You know, we should not, if you go to Philip, um, Philippines, it's a different. If you go to um, uh, where the Maldives is a Muslim country, you don't live. If you ask me, the highest divorce case in a small island is them. 
I know because I have members, so they bring me, ah, this is my husband. Other six months, they say, oh, no, this is my new husband. So that's normal for them, even though. So there are cultures. In Sri Lanka, it's not. Malaysia, why the, the, the professor said the, divorce, the highest the education, the divorce cases were high. No, it was not the because they were educated women. It was there was a culture of there because it's a Muslim driven and uh, culture, and also you have Indians and you have Chinese. So there are three different cultures were there. In Sri Lanka, we still have that family unit. We have that family unit. But what has gone wrong in Sri Lanka is not the divorces, even though the divorces has been increased compared to this thing. Why it has increased is because we have a uh, huge gap on education, gender gap, right? The three-wheeler culture, the uh, boys failing maths is one of the key things. So we are not addressing, we are comparing things. We have to address the issue. We want the boys to get educated and get a job. What we want is soon get a job. But before that, remember, education is not just paper qualification. Our highest suicide is men and boys. Are we addressing it? The more we empower women, if we drag out the men, we are losing our people. We have to empower the family unit. That's why it matters. When you get a mother, you get the children also. Tell the husband why she's been empowered. Share the vision. Microfinancing professors showed that Bangladesh is a Muslim country where microfinance is started. So what happened to Sri Lanka microfinance? They targeted women. They targeted women. Women may to pay the uh, microfinance. They became sex workers. They may have to pay the this because ninety three percent women pay back the loans. We are men are less. So bank microfinancing is nothing to do with loans. Microfinance is helping them to start entrepreneurship. We forgot what's the core. We gave the money. This is what Sri Lanka brand, a woman selling something. This is what other countries brand. They, they sell the culture, we sell the product. That's why I said, we should use, without selling us, we should sell what we have. It. We should not sell women. This is not entrepreneurship. This is nothing to do with entrepreneurship. This is not our culture. But this is what, I took this picture on the internet and it's on a Sri Lankan, one of the premier media, this picture. So see what other countries sell, see what we sell. Are we really talking about women empowerment? Women uh, representation in travel and tourism, I think Professor Trachi touched it, but I said the global says 60 to 70% of workers in hotels, catering, tourism sector are women, yet women are less frequently occupy manager and posters than men. Because we still are in that research which uh, done by Oxford long time ago. They said, okay, women are good in managing. So you go for all the uh, programs where the men speak. They always say, you know, this Oxford, this is, men are good at managers. So above managers, no. <laughs> and we, when women speak, They'll ask how you balance work and home. Yeah. But men speak? No. So I, I asked that uh, question once from a male. Then he was he just went silent and he said, um, uh, you know, my wife is a housewife. Then how can you do, talk about how you balance? Even she can be a housewife. Nothing wrong. Housewives has more roles, right? But Give appreciation to him because today he's standing there because someone ironed his shirt. Someone cooked for her, him. So same way, women, we also should change our attitudes. Women should change our attitudes towards women. Be empathous. In Sri Lanka, women are highly underrepresented in Sri Lankan tourism workforce with women accounting to less than 10% of the tourism formal working population. Relative to 54% internationally compared to the sizable female representation in the tourism and variation. 
Highest number of university, we probably say, are female. Law faculty, highest women are entering. Medical, highest. Arts, highest. Management, highest. What's happening to Sri Lankan young girls who are getting? When they get the MBBS, our fertility level has gone down. And our university system, they are out around 29, 30, they have to get married. So they can get pregnant, they deliver baby, they, they can't do higher studies. So the, the, the girl who get married to a doctor, the male, he does his specialized this thing and be a specialist. She will be always an MBBS doctor because she has to have that role of being the mother. That's a choice. But why not give support to this thing? Why not support her too? Why we do not change that? We have so much, much of young girls. Or if you ask 10 girls, nine of them are going to the law faculty. But how many of them are practicing? After they become LLB, they will say, can we get office job? How many women represent the rape cases? How many women? Lawyers. Divorce cases. How many women lawyers? We don't have it. There is a gap on that. We get qualification. If you go to the culture, eastern side, why you get qualifications? Why you get eastern side qualification? For marriage. If you got a good degree and all that, you get a car, Colombo house, two-story house. Well, we never speak about, we say that, we never speak about our packages on W packages in North. You know, we have packages. But what India did? They bought laws to protect women. Where are we? Apikina me apitava arakubidanda ban again to take a fight karna. First talk about us. We never speak. India brought if you if you ask for a dowry, you can go to prison. In North, you have packages. No one speaks. Politicians have that's not our people, no let them speak. Eastern said, no, that's not our people because politicians have their own agenda. But we women never speak about our women. We use the word minority. There's nothing called minority. Minority is us when we ignorant of that. That's the culture. That's what it's tourism. Why women are not coming? North side, there, there is tourism, but that's the diaspora coming. They are ready to help the North. But are we promoting North? We are still promoting beaches yet. We are the Maldives also does. Why we are not promoting our authenticity, our food? I'll speak about the street food in Sri Lanka. How we should we should empower women in tourism? Provide awareness on women in tourism, visit areas. How many students visit areas? Where I have gone to everywhere in Sri Lanka. There's no area that I've not visited. I have lived with people. I have been there for so many years. Only during the COVID, I stayed in Colombo. So if you ask me whether I have gone to Korean side of Colombo, everywhere I've been. When, when the COVID was hit, I was with those people. But I have been there. But how many people in Sri Lanka have been there? But how many people go and make a make a How we promote? Visit Sri Lanka. That's not branded. We, 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 we have gone to a lower level. We are not putting. How many students of uh, universities, academic who are doing tourists, hotel school, and all they think hotel schools means you have to send them. Send them to areas. Ask about the cultures. Who has gone to Mana? Mana is one of my favorite, and I lived there for three years. How the Mana will promote Karan? That was the most beautiful thing in my life, Mama. They gained then among approval like a good deal. Waburwe gained. That was the most beautiful thing. And Manavala me Rati and Hondamatana because I still remember with Nilam when I went there. Uh, Nilam, we thought we had a Tamil person who always goes with me for those areas. They thought we are police. He ran away, so I got the Rabotel. Make a regular Mama Rangava. Right, because when he came down, these two were standing. So they thought it was policy. Then you have these um, ruins there. 
टेबल लेखा दाल है इतना रामे का तिला मान्यो कटिया तिला व्यवहारी ना मालूम है कि तिला दाल विकुड में प्रमोट कराने व्हाट वी आर प्रमोटिंग मैना इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट ब्यूटीफुल रहन दे वे हाईम पास से गया में यू सी द पीपल हाउ दे आ दे दे हैड ओनली बीन इन 2010 दे हैड ओनली टू होटल्स दैट वाज वन वाज रन बाय स्वीडिश गाय नॉट श्रीलंकन स्वीडिश एंड इट वाज रन बाय अ वूमन हु वाज फ्रॉम माय स्कूल अ टैमिल गर्ल फ्रॉम कोटेन सो वे आई वेन आई गो यहाँ की सांबोले तरह रहने हैं so I I stay used to stay and there's another hotel which invested by the IFC which I stayed there also now you have so many hotels but Mana is a historical area how are we promoting Mana loke tina parana ma gahati yano egyam there you have that churches you can see those were the first built churches are we selling those we are not selling those Provide soft skills for women, cottage and entrepreneurship. Tourist area, soft skills then. I mean, you don't need to go and do a academic training for those women. Take a mama vikunan ne tu a kahate ka vikunan vidya. Ape there are some waterfalls. I don't think any of you all some areas may kilometer ay kila nilam ganyan. Even you go there, you see five kilometers. But I walked up to those things, and they a take a bila kia karidi le ano. How? Because they don't know how to sell. They don't know. And you have some good authentic things there. Soft skill like university students that you are getting like, Amme mehemai vikuna ne, Amme mehemai meva kara ne, Ko, we don't do. Apitati yana degree eka, Apitati yana PhD, Apitati yana. You think tourists come for that? We are not selling those. Include into tourism, uh, Returning migrant women workers. This I have spoken to all the ministries. I have told them, and I actually, I, this is something we have to look at. They go as unskilled. Pyramid dahayak airport gila gani ekwa rata yamana rata. Right? This is the country. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, eastern side, you don't allow women to come uh, to Colombo and sell there. But those men hire a man, come to the airport to send the woman. I told them, Eastern side, I, I'm not scared. They don't. When I come, I speak that. I tell them, you won't test. There's no, if you go to some areas, you don't see shops where women run. Then in a hell, you have to And then there's the sanitary way. I can't go to the That's one of the key issues. But the same men, our uh, Sri Lankan men, 10 men, hire a vehicle, come to the airport and send the wife. Pain and ekarat. Are we really looking at? They are going at unskilled when they come. May say mini sunta may vela na may vakaran na sir may kose ka katay vila in the gan. But when they come out, they give them to enjoy. They want to be with the family. Gena apu ay langka vitara na apu teke world market teke tin. Apu gamang the first impression in Sri Lanka. Rati na gan na langka again in the gan da. How many times I wrote in papers? Those are branded. Me make them many professor look look brands. A branded company is Lanka We are talking about tourist uh, empowering women tourism. When we our local to a people who are coming to there is seen as well. Are me Peter Kotwa de gya tehe makaranne. This is what we do. Education, educated people are not addressing this. We are silent. Eka pe karne me, eka villa aviation sector ke ka, ara eka villa ara ministry ke me ka pita dalen hai. Then we put up our stress releases are politicians. Eko langi varad me alag. The day the educated people start talking, the Sri Lanka will change. I know I've been very open minded. I've been talking very. I people has said to me, people has harassed me. I don't care because I don't gain anything in life. For me, it's because I have a craziness of this country. So I'm telling with what I have seen, what I have experienced. Target on women solo travelers. Sri Lanka is compared to, yes, we are not safe much, but compared to other countries, Sri Lanka is one of the safest countries for solo travelers. But if women can be the promoters of the solo travelers, if women can actually, uh, now I bring a lot of women to Sri Lanka, and they trust me and become. 
I'm not promoting tourism, but I want to show them. The yesterday there was um, uh, three days ago, ago a Uber research paper was putting on the taxi drivers. So I was a speaker, and that research was done by Oxford uh, 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 Economics, and they were from Bangladesh and uh, India. And I was looking at uh, the economist. I'm from Bangladesh, and I was like, God. When I went to Bangladesh Education Ministry, they said, Sulochana, you know, we are using your, uh, your pre-education only, our module is still in Bangladesh. We are bringing their economists to do our research. And Malaysia, I still remember, I came here and I told the, uh, he's also here, National Youth Council. Uh, I met the professor of Malaysia. She came to meet me. She wanted to do something. She said, you know, when we were in students, your country came and did the about the skill uh, certification for us. Now we are coming to your, your country and doing skill certification from Malaysia. Where we have gone? Proud Sri Lanka. Something is wrong. So are we really selling the right things? Train women promoting culture-related entrepreneurship. Keep about, yeah, spy is, there's an issue. But are we really putting the spy into a real thing? Are we really promoting the spy in a healthy way? Why we put our... Sorry? Yes, but we are not putting that because why we are not putting... We are, we are promoting the negativity. Uh, spa then the because Spa brothel spy arrest If they are with women, why you arrest? So I always write and ask, what happened to the women who are only men? How you got it into the brothel? Sex workers, you have to have been. So they, that's what, we have to change it. We have to ask questions. So we had to, when um, Maldives, they had a spa where we went to that spa. I was shocked they were at Cinnamon, uh, Cinnamon Grand, and they said they shifted there. And they were Sri Lankan and they were doing really good. But are we really looking at it in a positive manner? That's a, we women think like that. We say that no. We women, we have to fail. We have to change. Before we change the men, we women need to change. Educate teachers and school children. Syllabus Kathiala, may tourism genu gana to ada. Teachers love in Askaran. That is something I will always say. Teachers are Tami Tani Lame Ganu Lame Kuna Mahandi Ganagan, Naraki Ganagan. Good, you have to, Matna Manda, but you have to, right? But tell the teachers what tourism industry is the positive side. Then go and educate the school children. Tourism is nothing to do with fun. Yeah, because speakers has become trainers. That's the thing. I'll come come into that with that. But those are that's why they could they once they once said, yeah. No, you have to have that. Uh, th that's a yeah. Title matters for us. Full suit, empty pocket, lifestyle. But I stop and I always call the mother. That's because very sad. In the the That's because very sad. In the passport, the fridge, the car, the TV, the car, the that's the Sri Lanka. 
But Bangladesh, there is a special center for women tourism. There's an area with, uh, uh, wherever you are, I, uh, for last seven years, I'm asking for that for in Sri Lankan airport. I have not given. I said, I'll find someone to pay to get the women uh, made products into that. Bangladesh has that. Yeah. Bangladesh, they, they have it. Whenever they have all that and they say these are women made uh, this thing. But, and I, I normally, when I go and visit there are a lot of foreigners because they want to help a woman. Because their moment, the woman is helped, the family is helped. Lanka will not have women in tourism. Why tourism need her? Not her need tourism. Why tourism need her? So I want to correct that. We don't need tourism, but tourism need us. Why? First one, women are the most sympathetic people. We understand. We understand what they want. We understand what society wants. We understand what culture wants. We understand local tourists. We understand foreign tourists. Right? So tourists need women. Not just homestay women. Me homestay kai gain we patalava gana tianava. Homestay is not I don't know why homestay women in Aikela. I have a gathering in the land of the I still wonder why homestay and women. Then the trust. Yes, we women have some issues, but women are most trustworthy. They think twice. And uh, they said that we have got more, many of the AIDS from, yes, from uh, Sri Lanka has uh, AIDS, but more, more than women as carry, uh, carrying the AIDS, because I've been working with some of them. It's the men who carried, and some of the women, house, more than women housemaids, the male who goes on drivers uh, to those areas has brought it. So there is nothing to do with women or these things. Some of the, because we don't talk about, yes, tourists is coming. Why not promote uh, safe sex? We don't. But doesn't mean that safe sex is only for tourists. Local has more issues on uh, sex. Authentic. Street food, authentic street food. Uh, for eight year, 2013, when I did a program in Hambantota, um, uh, Agunakola Palace, I met this mother. I did a three day session. She was 70, 65 years. She's the latest who come and among Okkam hit 30, 40 uh, women. So I asked why you want to come. No, 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 I want to come. And she had a huge story. I'm not going to tell story. She was making kaun cookies. And she was really good on that. Where, uh, whatever she does, but very uh, in 2015, she was invited by Singapore to do a street food on kaun cookies. So she called me and said, Madam, what is Singapore in Enda Kiwa? And she was so thrilled. But up a street food dwala mono Any Sri Lankan street food have you seen? We have we have so many beaches. Alatina, Dakalatina, the Kakulo, the Dakalatina, the me. Loku is so name or a podi so in a way in Eva Dakalatina. We have not said. What we are selling? Dakila the Konda Kaumak mea karana. Koki seka, vanilla koki seka hadana dakalatina, the street food dweller, uh, me, me, gambiris koki seka, sini koki seka, penny koki seka. Have we seen that? We have not seen that. Dakalatina the api, shop me brand kina, candos kiana, Sri Lankan brand chocolate teka. If you go to India, Pune or the Himachal, you can see handmade Indian chocolate are selling by women. Are a stadium make a gov handmade candles killer than I see. I love candles. Mama, other tatkane candles is there. But have we put candles chocolate on street because this is Sri Lanka? Candles a kebab me, ratkar level chocolate a kandla kadan or other. We don't do those things. Have you seen those things? Anna sitir, Anna si gedia kagala, tamara palanga kavikuna, Anna si raumata kapala, make a gahala vikuna nova. We are not. We are. Entrepreneurship country with copying. We have no improvement entrepreneurship. We don't localize it. Yeah, whether 
whatever the background he comes, but the product I agree, but we don't do that. Ape coffee willing, are we really making cappuccino? Ape coffee ka coffee ka genal la ita ka kota la cappuccino ka hadan na tiratak ne me. Then there's the storytelling. Women are good on storytelling. We are the best on storytelling. We can tell our stories, we can tell our histories, but we don't do that. Brand. One said, uh, Ceylon. Ceylon is just a brand. Sri Lanka is the country. So Ceylon is, are we selling that Ceylon brand? Yes, if you go to uh, uh, Turkey, they will not know Sri Lanka. They think we are part of Maldives or part of India. But they know Maldives, but they don't know Sri Lanka. But Tikian, they know us. So are we really putting Ceylon? Smile. Are them make a call like COVID? Smile is something that women has, but you know, in uh, may, uh, someone asked you know, why we can't promote that Mrs. World, Mrs. You know, in Mrs. World or whatever country, there are 64 smiles. They have to learn to be a pageant. Oh, hi, 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 being the Sri Lankan woman is a natural smile, honest smile. We have to sell that. Then our culture. Our culture is very noble. Our culture of woman is, the woman itself is, a, we are not aggressive. We don't go and fight for things. Our woman will not fight for things. Our woman will wait for things. Because we were told, unless you are given a seat, not to sit, take a seat. Mama eke hinda tama api taam passe ni. Man kyaani, seat eka dunna taam putre, bench eka hari andala idha ganda kiyala. Because we also have to have a place. We have a big role on GDP. Men are not bringing anything. We are bringing. Garment is us. Uh, tea is ours. Housemaid is ours. We are the GDP of Sri Lanka. Have I apitama manage karagana informal sector in the gana tourist again a katakarana ratak? So are we innovation means science means are we really using women? Don't ask for women to come in. Are we using them, giving them the opportunity, giving them the choice to choose it? That is what we have to ask. The heartbeat of tourism reasons is Stefan grace of resilience of women who like to comprise guiding and travelers play an independent role of shaping and enriching the journey of exploration and culture connection. Sorry, this is I wrote today for thinking of tourism for me because I'm not from a tourism, but wherever I go, I, I speak about Sri Lanka. I never wear something from this. I always wear handmade products of my women. Even this is from my, my own women. Even my shoes are like that because I wanted to promote. Wherever I go and speak in international, I wear my thing. My people want, not just because I'm a brand, but because I want to tell this is my story. Whether I'm not, I never worry. I always tell young girls, you know, you don't need to wear brand things to be a brand. Be a brand that brands want to be with you. We Sri Lanka is a brand where we people start. Local product, imported one, international branded one, we want to take it. Why not give an author? Ayurveda is something Sri Lanka has, but don't make it so localized. Make me own out of my hammer, no, make it international, make it authentic. Sri Lankan made, just not Ayurveda. I always argue with uh, Dr. Himali, I said, make it original, make it a DST. Why be? Make a Lanka way Ayurveda. Kotta Malli eka apita export karla bama. If you go to, I went to some of the UK, we talk about our exports. I didn't see any of the Sri Lanka products on supermarkets. So I went and asked, they said, nah, ena vaakki, eva enne me baggage se, eva Sri Lankan houses world to vita raiye. Maha vai ye? Why? Find an agent. Find a woman. Go and sell it. When Wim Canada started, first thing I opened was uh, sending products to Sri Lankan uh, people who are there and asking them to sell it for uh, foreigners. 
If you go to uh, one of the best selling uh, uh, food items in uh, Toronto is Sri Lankan app. She, she is a superb entrepreneur. And one of the best, uh, I think she he came to Sri Lanka. I went to because he hosted me in UK. Uh, Sri Lankan hoppers, an Indian guy who's doing now he has started Sri Lankan hopper school, an Indian guy. Silon hoppers, Kela. Because they know, Ape Kiria Ape Hadagan Bene Kolambayata Milo Ape YMC Akebandaka, why Milo Ape Dadira, Milo Ape. Kiri ape hadan eliye thiela beti close in thamai kiri ape patangatte. Then the Jeff na vela meva. Apita ma pani ape kata karna. We are not. That's called improvement entrepreneurship. That is not innovation. It's improvement. We are not talking about that. So this is my way of thinking about how women should, uh, how tourists should get women not. <laughs> we mentioned you all have to target women if you all want to look at tourism as an industry where everyone is equal, where Sri Lanka has to grow, but not selling women, but selling the brand. Without selling women, sell what we have. And whether it's a research or anything, don't wait for the uh, backgrounds or anything. Use Sri Lankan university students. Give them the learning that they do practically. Ask them to go places. Where immigration. Ask three or four students to stay one week. Get the data. Ask questions. We, I have never seen a photographer on the road, free photographer, selling product. Like, you want to wear a Sri Lankan saran and take a photo. Gol vala giyamanang, there's a, um, there's four Muslim women now wearing, uh, helping the uh, woman, women, not worries to wear saris. The egola maha di oluwa maha na niti begola oluwa maha la tamay photo gaane. So I have, what is it, nikang in the band, ma vena vada katikiya mangi lakho, ira mehema maha ne muslim maaya, mehema di ne singhala ya, mehema tamil ya, mehema di ne osariyan di ne indiana. So they, they ask you, can you wear the Mamadan nanny? It may make on the candy and they can. But they are trying it. We are not doing that. Sarama Sarama Kandala Nikanti and a Sarama Kandala photo ekagan. We don't do that. Have you seen Meda Sula Kotwa to give Sudo come behalaino? They bag to sang in a mamba lock out a photographer can a kindle gun or the dealer. Mabel and print curl at the end of Pula here. This is your swan here. Sri Lanka Kila Gahala. Menna street takagala, we don't do that. Mona na the traffic police takanang itarino. But when you say the environment, Narang, Etherangila, Narangedia, Karimona Harigan, Evikuna Nekina, these are uneducated people. Dila bag yakadalakina, Miss Lili Gahala Kanavana, Lila Daga and the bag yakadala gila get the visikara. Those people say, Kareke Apianaya, Eliata visikara. So never think that uneducated people are the most will know they are the most caring people just because we are educated we have degrees we have all the titles we are not the change makers because we are silent we are scared of what people say we live for other people we are always thinking about if you want to empower women in tourism first for request for women Stop judging other women who are in doing tourism. Stop judging the women who are not educated. Stop judging the women who are not gone through formal training but doing a business. And to all the men, it's not about women's rights. We need both men and women. And for, for parents, help the children to have a future in this country. Thank you for the time. Thank you for the invite. Thank you very much, Madam Dr. Silochana Sekera. And if there are any questions, uh, Madam Sekera will welcome them as well. Seems that you all have explained everything well, ma'am. <laughs> Okay, so uh, moving to uh, the next session, and before that, we need to thank Dr. Solochna Segera, and uh, I would like to invite
Professor Nadira Karunavira, President, National Academy of Science, Sri Lanka, and Founder President. Dr. Sepalika Sudhasingha, Director General, NSF. Dr. Hermali Silva, Vice President, SLNC. Dr. Himanati Silva, the Treasurer, SLNC. And Dr. Thirina Vanikasekara, the President of SLNC. Madam Dr. Solochana Segera, please come front to receive the token of appreciation from Professor Nadira Karunavira and Dr. Sepalika Sudhasingha. I would like to invite Dr. Hermali Silva to present the certificate to Madam Segera. Dr. Himali De Silva and Dr. Thilina Vanika Sekara to present the letter of appreciation. Madam Dr. Sepalika Singh, I would like to invite you to present the letter of appreciation. Thank you very much, Madam, for your insightful presentation and explaining the women empowerment through the tourism industry. Moving ahead to the next session, the value of addition in the tourism industry through vocational education. I would like to invite Professor Mahesh Dirasingha, the Vice Chancellor of Univotech, and to read the citation of Professor Mahesh Dirasingha. As usual, I would like to invite the President of the Sri Lanka National Chapter of Organization for Women in Science for Developing World, Dr. Thilina Vanikasekara. It's over to you, Madam. Thank you, Charita. This is, I'm happy to welcome the next speaker, Vice Chancellor Univotech, Professor Mahesh Edir Singh. Professor Edir Singh is a specialist in lightning climatology, natural disaster management and mitigation, lightning and surge protection, and transient analysis. Professor Edir Singh received his BSc honors, special degree in physics from the University of Colombo, Sri Lanka in 1997, and the PhD in lightning protection under a split research program between the University of Uppsala, Sweden, and the University of Colombo in 2007. He completed his MBA from London Metropolitan University, UK, in 2016. Professor Edir Singh is the Vice Chancellor of the University of Vocational Technology, operative under the purview of the Ministry of Education from May 2023. He also served as the Director General of the Sri Lanka Institute of Advanced Technological Education, Ministry of Education from September 2022 to April 2023. He was the Commissioner of Sri Lanka Inventors Commission, Ministry of Science, Technology and Research from 2015 to 2018. Since 2002, Professor Mahesh Edir Singh is a member of the faculty of University of Colombo as a professor in engineering physics. And he was the president of section E1 physical science in Sri Lanka Association for the Advancement of Science, Sri Lanka in 12, 2012. And a joint secretary of the Institute of Physics, Sri Lanka from 2007 to 2010. Professor Edir Singh also received the President's Award for Scientific Publication from His Excellency the President of Sri Lanka for the recognition of scientific research published and received the National Research Council Merit Award for Science Publications. He has shown his innovativeness by contributing to 25 inventions and he secured many recognitions including three gold medals and a grand award at the international level held in Switzerland and South Korea and USA. Professor Mahesh Edir Singh, I'm privileged to invite you for the next session. Thank you. So, good morning to everyone.
President, Dr. Thilina, and her executive members of the Sri Lankan chapter of uh, Organization for Women, Women in Science for the Development World. And ladies, and we have a few gentlemen as well. The way that we talk about today's uh, session by the previous two eminent speakers, Dr. Sulochana, as well as from Professor Suranga, there is a crucial issue that we need to address as soon as possible. So let me explain the issue in a very short way. When we as a childhood, we have learned that Sri Lanka is a developing country and still we are at the same level. And in the near future, also, we don't see a way of change in that. And why? A simple question. But that is the hardest question to find the answers as Sri Lankans. For me, the answer is, as Sri Lanka, if you want to develop, we want to balance between import and export. Otherwise, we are not in a position to enhance our economy to map with the world economy. And why we are, we as failures. If you talk about import, we import everything other than Sri Lankans. Why, luckily, there is no any other country that we can import Sri Lankans. It's only in Sri Lanka we have Sri Lankans. And we talk about when you talk about export, let me talk about in an extreme manner. We export Sri Lankans mainly. So we need to balance. Or if we consider that this is our resources as Sri Lankans, we need to empower. In our culture, we have a very long history. In our history, when we talk about cultural enhancement, we cannot even think about that empowering without empowering women. We have a family, we have a village, society, where mostly women can decide very often. So it is very important to do that. On the other hand, Another failure that we are having, mostly in our culture, most of the Sri Lankans are followers, not innovators. In our mind, we are having creativity a lot, but mostly we act as followers. I think last around 10 years or Around that only this homestay concept was emerged in Sri Lanka. And now everywhere we can see this homestay is everywhere. If you can see a, a vegetable shop that Mudalali is doing really well, after 10 months or 6 months, you can see a series of similar like shops around. So we are followers. And why is that? Again, I believe it is based on our education system. When we are, when we were, I mean, kids, like just three or four years old, we used to do whatever we want to do. That is why we need mothers or parents to care of us. 
if we are in the rooftop, if there is no barrier, we would like to walk. Because we don't know what is the risk. So if it is, if we get fail, okay. After that, okay, you feel it. So we, then the parents and the society will come to our kid's life and try to take care of them. And with that whole process, I believe we are killing the creativity of the kids. Then when we go to education system, in the garden, primary, and we are following. What we are following? We are following the, the textbook-based education system. And after grade five scholarships, those who receive very high marks, when the media asks, okay, what do you want? What is your goal? I want to be a doctor. I want to be an engineer. I mean, that is where our education system established this, I mean, that is the culture. Why? The parents, nothing wrong with the parents, with due respect to parents' expectation of their kids, what they say, what they believe is, our kids should have a comfortable life with a recognized profession. I haven't heard a kid says, I want to be the best doctor in the country. I haven't heard a kid says, I want to be the best engineer in the world. So it's a routing followers. So when it comes to our education, I define our education system as a railway network. You go to a station, buy a ticket, and there is a destination. It's a predefined destination for you. So you go there and you get out. And after that, if you want to go somewhere, there is no railway network. So get stuck. Oh, it's a predefined A level. Then after that, university. Then after a certain profession. So it's a predefined process. That is what we call the our national education system. Nothing wrong. We need, we need that. And when it comes to vocational education, I define vocational education as a our roadmap. You can get into bus anywhere, and you can go to go to a place where you want to go at least a close by location. So vocational education is somewhat like that. Whenever you decide to go and, and learn something to transfer or to establish your own profession, there is an opportunity, irrespective of the education background. In all levels, after each and every all-level examination in the country, in each year, there are 80,000 plus dropouts. And what they do? And after A-levels, around 40,000 approximately can be getting into national university system. Rest? go to private university, some other professions, all these things. So, this vocational education has been established in a very organized manner in early 2000 by introducing National Vocational Qualification Framework. We call NVQ. And we have NVQ 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. NVQ 7 is equivalent to a degree level. And importantly, these NVQ qualifications are specifically designed for a profession. 
for a profession and why we need that because when we go to industry to survive you need to enhance your skills in that area so in the vocational qualification framework there is a way of doing that so we have government owned organizations like vta nita department of technical education and training dtt technical colleges college of technologies and then in addition to these organizations we have private sector organizations who are catering for nvq programs and there you learn for a particular profession in different levels and in at the end of the program there is a person called assessor that assessor comes to you and assess by referring predefined competitive standards once you get through that process you will get the nvq qualification so what is the role of the university of vocational technology of when you drop out after all your examination you can go and do nvq 1 2 3 4 <clears throat> nvq 4 is approximately at the same level of a level little above when we talk about the in the vocational field industry field <clears throat> and then you have nvq 5 6 5 national diploma then high national diploma so the university of vocational technology has been established in 2008 <clears throat> to fulfill a national requirement what is the national requirement those kids students or adults who missed the bus and couldn't getting into a university to get the degree and then they who follow nvq level programs reached up to 4 5 6 sorry they can getting into vocational university our university of vocational technology and get the degree so university of vocational technology is offering 16 degree programs under four faculties where if you are having nvq 6 high national diploma <clears throat> there are some programs within a maximum of one year one and a half years you can get the degree directly related to the profession that is very important so when it comes to your industry that we are talking about tourism and hospitality is the vocational education doing a, a, a significant role here let me tell you an example recently i have faced just to add some of the thoughts raised by dr sulochana i was heading towards polonna rua just about to reach giritale i have i have seen in my google map call there's a location called khabara bokpur i don't know whether you have heard about khabara bokpur have you no so it's like almost like 500 meters away so just just around 100 meters to close that location in the left side there is a board launched by sri lanka tourist board it doesn't take cover book but it it says i can't exactly remember what was the name but it says uh, enjoy with monitors
exactly in front of the Giritale Central College, in the left side, of, of course, there is a Bokur. So I stopped. There were few people, then I asked, what is this? Is this so-called cover Boku? Yes, yes. Then there was a person around 60 years old came to me and I introduced myself as a, as a professor from University of Colombo. I didn't say that I am the vice chancellor. So then I asked, what is this? Ah, sir, we are targeting tourists. So for what? No, there are some cabreas. So then I asked, so there is a small lake under the, the this this bokua, and then uh, I have seen some cabreas. It's most around almost in the evening, around five thirty or six o'clock. So they are about to leave, but they, Okay, luckily I have seen some cabareas. It's yes, it's a well-trained cabaret. So, so this is what you are showing to tourist. Cabaret? No, 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 no. Then so wait will you? What are you sir? Happy body show cut down. Yes, okay. Then there were some uh, benches also. So he asked me, okay, sit. Then there was a bucket next to that bench with some salias, you know, the, the fish. There was a uh, like four or five feet stick and uh, uh, he just uh, hooked this uh, salia into the one end of the this uh, stick and took that and went to this lake. You don't believe all the kabariyas are coming towards that stick. And then somehow one Kabaraya managed to lead the story and came to the road. So Kabaraya is somewhere there. So this guy is raising the the, the stick and the, so this Kabaraya is almost in vertical alignment. It was so funny. Then I asked, so what is the response of tourists? So good. Then I asked, how about your business? So bad. This is where we need to empower the people. Emp not to empower the pe person who is uh, playing with the cabaret. We need to empower the tourist guides. That was the saddest part of the story. He said, almost no tourist guide wants to stop that place. Why? Because he's playing with the Kabaraya, the tourists giving some thousand rupees or ten dollars or something, right? And after that, they are going, but uh, the tourist guide cannot get the commission from the, the person who is playing with the Kabaraya. But our tourist guides, if you can train, if you can let them, if if you manage to get the tourist in a happy mood, at the end of the day, you will get the commission from the tourist. And then there is another story. We talk about Paul Sambola, Dr. Sulochana loves very much. Me too, yes. Now, if you go to Thailand-like countries, there is a part of their vocational education by promoting their food industry, by letting the tourists to take in part of the food that they have ordered to cook.
so along with the our normal routes where our tourists go if we can allow our tourists to spend like 15 minutes to 30 minutes to go to a, a rural area uh, a village uh, a home if if they can learn if not forget the miris color we have this so called wangiri at least ne? so we can promote that so we need that level vocational education also in the country we need to take the whole country as a family to fulfill this requirement and also the media so in the vocational education if we could, if we talk about There are 37 NVQ programs in the country. There are 37 NVQ programs in the country starting from NVQ 1 for and to 6, covering almost all the three. Now the University of Vocational Technology is the is the responsible organization for developing curriculums for these NVQ programs, especially for NVQ 5 and 6. So we do develop these things and we revise the curriculums depending on the recommendations of the panel for, by every three years or five years. Now, for example, we are having hospitality management at NVQ level 6. It's almost like two and a half year program. And there we have the on the job training in the industry. Now, if we go to, we have six university colleges under the University of Vocational Technology, and we have one university college in Andhradapura. If you go there, you can see there is a kitchen. There is a bedroom. There is a bathroom. And we train them. Even when I go there, they 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 serve us, and they are getting experience. So the the people who are following these programs are getting a hands-on experience as well as they are ready to go to the industry. Next day they are ready to oh, yes, ma'am. Yes. Yeah, so we, that is why, I mean, <clears throat> it is like this. Let me, let me answer the question in a different way. All right. Okay. Exactly. Yes, it was popular. <clears throat> now, yes, I, there was a teledrama yesterday. Suddenly, I, I, I had a, Chance to watch this uh, Sally Pokuro something in 8.30. There was a person called Lambert. And he went to the close by shop. And I don't know whether you have seen that. He had ordered all the Bullock Twitters to sell to him. Earlier, he, he reached to that shop and asked, how many Bullock Twitters you are selling? Uh, around 40 per day. Okay. You make sure from tomorrow onwards these each and every bullet Twitter that you prepare 14 a I will buy all 40. So what will happen to the customers? That is the one of the mafia that we are facing in the country. Right. I don't want to talk about that in a different way but on the other hand, in our culture, when we go to supermarket to buy something, made in Sri Lanka, made in USA, just a 50 rupee difference, which one you will buy? Made in USA. It's 
the demand that we need the societal support for our innovators. We as Sri Lankans, if we don't believe on our own products, how can we talk about innovative country? I have no idea what has happened, but tell you very frankly, recently, just two months before, when I, when I assumed duties as the Vice Chancellor of University of Vocational Technology, I get to know that there were around 150 products developed by our students. So I have managed to launch all these products as an exhibition. So we managed to launch this exhibition somewhere around the end of June. And I'm very proud to say, end of November, we have managed to commercialize 98 products. Yes, we have done that. And end of December, or early January, first week, still I'm not in a position to say because I'm waiting for a date from some key people, we are going to declare open our own products of, at the Inuvatec. And we don't sell cheap products. Remember the cheap or the low cost is no longer valid in the society. We need to cater to the demand. So therefore you can see here in the vocational education under NVQ programs, we have 37 programs covering up to NVQ 6. And these are the people in this area that directly involved in the industry. We need to protect them and we need to guard them. We need to transfer our tacit knowledge to these people when they come to the industry. And there are 42 institutions in the country accredited by the NVQ program that deliver these programs throughout the country. And then when it comes to <coughs> Univertec, University of Vocational Technology, now we had a we had a discussion earlier, our name changed from Ceylon to Sri Lanka. <clears throat> when Innovatec, University of Vocational Technology established, the name, the brand that was established as Innovatec. And people were under the impression that Innovatec is some kind of a technical college or some kind of a private institution. So we had to change now even our domain from Innovatec to UOVT. But that is the front end. In the back end, yes, we do market with the name of Innovatec. So we need Ceylon as our brand name. Let the country name is there. There is no harm that we have the name of the country. No harm that we can brand our industry as Ceylon. Why? There is no barrier. It's Ceylon. Ceylon tea. Imagine you, you change that Ceylon tea to Sri Lanka tea. End of the story. No one will buy. People will ask, okay, I need Ceylon tea. I'll tell you one experience that I had when I was in uh, Inventors Commission as the commissioner. Dr. Himali perhaps knows this story. There was a product launched in Sri Lanka. Sapu, I can't remember, some, some singular name for the product and the invent, invented by a Sri Lankan. A failure. Wrong marketing. So I, I wanted to change that. 
I had a discussion with Nipo also. So I somehow we managed to change the uh, the copyright logo into a Spanish name. I can't remember exactly. And invented by a world recognized inventor. Now, he's exporting his products. So we need some innovative ways to get through the barriers imposed by the culture. That is the important part. So in, 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 in university vocational technology, in addition to these uh, vocational education programs, under NVQ7, we introduced and launched about to graduate these students now, Bachelor of Hotel Management degree program. Professor Ranga is also a part of our program. And you can see different expertise. It's, it's more towards, because when you are at the degree level, you are more towards the managing side. You should know how to manage. So we, we assess different competencies. And uh, on the job training program, we have recognized our program with the help of the leading industries. You can see Mount Lavinia, Shangri-La, Maya. So where these people are training. So just to conclude the session, I would like to end up with a very open request. We as Sri Lankans, we should have our own citizen's responsibility. If we can understand and move Together with this citizen's responsibility, yes, in near future, we will be able to convert or transform Sri Lanka as a developed nation. We are talking about 2,500 year old history. And what we show to our tourists, go to Anuradhapura, this is the, the oldest village, Anuradha Grama, blah, 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 right. And you tell me a single technology that we are showing to our tourists with the based on so called 2500 history. Nothing. Nothing. But yes, we are having the technology. <clears throat> we are having the technology. So we need to recognize this technology. If you talk about these areas with Professor Raj Somadeva, he will talk about a lot. Right? So, a take home thought is be a Sri Lankan, always be with the citizen's responsibility, work as a family, as a whole Sri Lanka, then yes we will be able to find our success. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Any questions from the audience? We would like to entertain them and provide answers. Seems that there are no questions. So we'll be heading to the presentation. I would like to invite Professor Mahesh Ethir Singh, sir, please come front. And to present the token of appreciation, I would like to invite Professor Taranga Thordaniya, the editor of Sri Lanka National Chapter or WSD. And to present the certificate, I would like to invite Professor Sifti Iqbal.
And madam, to present the letter of appreciation, I would like to invite Professor R. D. H. Kulatunga. Madam Professor R. D. H. Kulatunga, the head of Department of Ayurveda Medicine and Indigenous Medicine of the Faculty of Indigenous Medicine, University of Colombo, and to Dr. Thirina Vanigasekara to present the gift from OWSD. Thank you very much. And uh, also, I would like to welcome Ms. Vajrapani De Silva, the senior scientist, Gene Tech, and Dr. Padmasi Rana Singha, the principal scientist of ITI, to this esteemed occasion. And the next session, I would like to invite Dr. Padmasi Rana Singha, the principal scientist of ITI, and he'll be talking about the unique preposition of the natural herbal products in nature-centric wellness tourism in Sri Lanka, a role of the scientist in reshaping traditional health and wellness approach. And as usual, keeping up the formality, I would like to invite Dr. Thirna Vanikasekara to present the citation. Thank you, Charita. Next speaker is the principal scientist from Industrial Technology Institute. Dr. Patmati Siri Ranasinghe is the principal research scientist in the Industrial Technology Institute, Malamve. He studied biochemistry, agricultural biotechnology, and plant physiology for his basics. He obtains his PhD in biochemistry and molecular biology from the University of Colombo. He is specialized in the areas of natural product biochemistry and biotechnology, bioassays, cell culture, and plant tissue culture, and technology and innovation commercialization. He has more interest towards the innovation, technology commercialization, and research and development. He has over 644 citations for his publications. Dr. Anasingh has more than 20 years of research experience in the fields of biochemistry, and molecular biology of natural products, including global training experience on in vitro bioassays and enzyme assays. He owned over five patents for his innovations. He also served as a senior deputy director of herbal technology section of the Industrial Technology Institute, Malame. Dr. Padma Siddhartha Singha, the podium is for you. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gen gentlemen. Uh, thanks goes to uh, Dr. Tilna, uh, like uh, OWSD for inviting me to uh, present uh, some of our thoughts and uh, concepts uh, that uh, it, this is not on, only my, so we are a team. We uh, actually try, try to exploit certain uh new concepts uh and, and things how we can uh develop new things or or uh, some commercializable items from our traditional knowledge or uh, know-how and, and and certain challenges that we are facing right in the morning uh session so far uh, we listen to the basically the problems that we are facing in the tourism industry and also the limitations uh, that uh, we already have faced and certain challenges in here. What I'm going to propose is this really, a, I'm not going to present any information or data here. So here we're going to discuss a bit of uh, ideas, uh, new ways uh, that how you can make some certain unique value propositions or a unique selling points where we can put into this industry and, and, and make this industry uh, sustainable, right? The title will, will be like unique propositions of natural herbal products in nature-centric wellness tourism. Here we're going to discuss the role of scientists, not the, not only the, uh, what you call the research scientists, here the science term scientists covered all like economists, even the 
uh, scientists who work in the tourist industry and also the economist, uh, financial scientists, all the, the term science is going to cover, cover like not only the experimental scientists, the whole sociologists, everything. Right, uh, just to see what we're going to uh, focus on here. So here we're going to focus on to understand the competitive business potential in health and wellness sector. Here, here so we, I, I'm going to focus mainly on health and wellness and also mainly uh, mainly towards the wellness tourism, right? The wellness sector, again, is a big, uh, from that, uh, since this forum basically focus on the tourism, so I'm going to talk uh, specifically on wellness tourism and then see how we can exploit unique values with our identical resources and knowledge base. We have a lot of identical resources and also especially the knowledge bases. So discussed a few of those uh, during last two sessions. But uh, still, we are struggling to like bring out something useful out of these. So here we are proposing certain approaches that we can try, certain business models that we can try to exploit these knowledge bases and resources. So in this journey, within next 50 minutes or so, we're going to just see the trends in global, well global wellness tourism and our current position. This is very important. We should know. Uh, since we are talking about the business, we should know the way the business is going on and where we are, uh, what is our target target groups or where are we going to position ourselves and where are we going to place certain commercial things, right? And then we're going to we need to have some idea on traditional or indigenous wellness practices and the possibility of their their application in modern commercial systems, right? We know we have a lot of uh, things, value values, and these things, but but we face problems when we try to place these things in the commercial system, right? Because uh, most of these value systems and these things we have, uh, they are not really match with the, co the commercial system. So we need to think in uh, different ways just to bring those into the commercial systems and uh, we need to share, right? So we'll discuss that, how we can share the things and how we can uh, like get to the teams and develop certain models in terms of sharing uh, and, and making some money out of this. This whole exercise that we're going to do is not for a publication or anything. This, this is a business business thing. If we uh, didn't pick that point right at the beginning, if we forget that these are all commercials, these are all money, and, and that, that's we make a mistake. So this, this is not the charity. This is not the academics. This is nothing. This is all focus on the money-making business. Right, we have to we have to think even at the right at the beginning of the concept uh, concept conceptualization. We forget that at right that point, so we're going to lose certain uh, the elements of our work. So we need to focus, keep that idea, and then we'll move forward how we can do that. Then the role of multidisciplinary approaches in validating and reshaping indigenous knowledge or know-how. This is very important. So I'll discuss it a little in depth. So when you say the validation, you I know most of these. Even the experimental sciences, they think it's, it's, uh, they think it's like very difficult and it takes long times and these things. So, but there are short, there are certain shortcut approaches or a, this not like a holistic, right? It's all depend on on your scope or your objective. So we'll discuss that how we can shape our things, how we can develop certain things and validate it and document it, publish while. Uh, we, we we can make something commercial out of that, right? And also we have developed certain very uh, small model on, on one of these concepts. So I'm not going to present the commercial concept. So I just give you some idea. Uh, and, and we have commercial concept, even we have done it up to the uh, business modeling. Uh, and, and unfortunately we did uh, this uh, during the very bad time of the country and the globe. Uh, but we have to, we have to, now we have to find new investors for uh, this concept, but uh, things, uh, Upon the Tilna's uh, request, I'm going to discuss the basic element of that model also since uh, actually we are not from the tourist sector. We are basically bioscience and and and, and, and chemistry sector. Uh, but uh, the innovation innovation and invention commercialization is, is a really a, is an art, right? So most all of scientists or science students should learn that just to make science into a business. So with that, uh, I, I'll move, move forward. Uh, so this is uh, just to give you some brief, you know, uh, the, we have forgotten another thing. So humans, all we are animals, right? We start our living in a, in a jungle, like all other 
uh, people and we then with these all civilization and these things uh, we we uh, we collect certain things and call referred those things as a well right now we have this the issue with the wealth and the health right uh, it's a difference of a single letter right the only the difference is the, is the first letter when you have H, you have health. When you have W, you have wealth. Right? Uh, all other letters are uh, similar. So the the scenario with the the global scenario, when you have when you have wealth, still you have a health problem. When you don't have wealth, still you have wealth, wealth uh, health problems. Right? This 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 situation. This is the situation. So early days when you when you don't have money, you have this malnutrition things and these things you have here or uh, not sufficient access to the your food or uh, sanitizations and other things, living conditions, these things, you have a health issue. Nowadays, most of us or most of developed worlds, they have enough wealth and they have, they have this like upper top corner NCDs and also the uh, mental, mental, mental ill or mental level health conditions. And uh, nowadays, the as per the latest report, uh, in 2022, uh, the 53 percent of uh, global deaths are from the NCDs. It's not from the the poverty, or it's not from the hunger, or it's not from the malaria, or whatever you name it, right? It's all. Uh, it's, and also, it's expected to be 76 percent, if I remember correct, by uh, 2030, right? That means our uh, uh, two third of your deaths is is related to your wealth, <laughs> right? That, that's what this means, right? Uh, that means these uh, wealth-related health issues has become a major burden uh, rather than the, uh, the poor or, a, or a, uh, nutrition, less nutrition or malnutrition-related conditions. So now we are talking about the business, uh, right? Re business related to the health. So we, if we are running a business, there should be money at, at the at the at the seller's end, or they should have purchasing power, right? This is this is uh, the next important thing we should focus. How the global uh, wealth is uh, being distributed, right? You know, it's not equally distributed, right? Most are not uh, sufficiently. Only something around twelve percent uh, more more wealth. Is uh, like uh, it's more than uh, one million USD is distributed uh, around twelve percent of global population where they have enough money. So if you have something to cater to them, right? Something to cater to them, then you can tap that money. That should be the philosophy behind, logic behind. So the people who are having this money is a wealthy pe wealthy pe people or a wealthy community. Probably they have a lot of other health issues like NCDs. Mental, uh, mental illness conditions, fitness problems, and all those things. Since they have money, they are ready to spend. Even you develop certain things, very, very technically solid things for a lower bottom of this segment. Let's say you develop, uh, you develop very good uh, health products. I mean, these uh, herbal products, just for a uh, layman people or as this, this business. That's that's I'm talking right that women. If you forget that story right at the beginning. That's the end of your story. This is not for giving something to the people, uh, like at the roadside. This is for really money making. So we have to, right at the, at the beginning of the designing of your projects, you need to think on that. So we should focus this top, the requirement of the top level of the people who are having wealth. So we need to identify their requirements and their problems. So if you need to sell something, the unique value propositions or selling propositions, you need to satisfy they are burning needs. You need to give them a value. So you need to identify their problems and you should give the very attractive solutions to that. Then if your product is making them happy, then you can sell it at a very high price because they have the purchasing power. This is the all uh, basic logic behind this. And then have a look into this, the so-called wellness tourist market. Right, as I'm not expert on this, I'm in the tourist. So as far as I read on this, the wellness and the wellness tourism is a totally different things again. And also the health 
or a medication based health and wellness is again also two different segments. The wellness generally refers to as not the medications, not the taking the drugs. It's the, the other supporting things like the exercises, maybe spas or maybe meditation, meditation spiritual things, other supports, the, the way of li uh, living things that gives you a healthy life. So it's not really a medication that refers to the wellness. So when you see that, it's it's a very huge market globally. It's, it's a 800 billion USD in 2022. This is by the, uh, there, there is an institute uh, called uh, uh, Wellness, Global Wellness Institute or something like that. I, I extracted these from their 20, 2022 report. According to this, you see, they have a CAGR of 7.55. Right, and also here you you can see this. Uh, here it says the most increasing segment is mental illnesses. Right, we should focus that these areas. Uh, right, but uh, we have you tapped this? Have you think of tapping this area? That is the most important thing. And and what are the tools or what are the resources that we have in in our hand right in our country how how we can strategically manage these things to develop certain solutions to uh, these people so this is how we look at this uh, problem but let's see what we are right at the moment right this is all global wellness economy this is not only the wellness tourism here also we have a point as a scientist or as a, a natural uh, product based scientist you can see here again mental 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 wellness Again, it is 181 billion. This all from this is the same journal I extracted from there. And wellness tourism, it's a 651 billion, right? Physical activities. And here again, healthy eating, nutrition, and weight loss. So we even may, may, we maybe need to introduce certain menus to even to the hotels. I don't know, right? So I, we are proposing it because thinking on these things rather than the having very like, uh, like, the traditional uh, like uh, menus and these things, we may be introduced better to introduce some uh, very health uh, conscious menus. And also with, along with that, we can do some research. It's not the full scale of research. We can do some nutrition, maybe some health benefits, maybe small clinical trials and publish that. Along with that, we can promote that. And maybe we can uh, produce that to certain hotels where things you see this demand for this is it, almost thousand billion USDs they are spending on the healthy eating so it, it must not be exactly the healthy I mean it's all the promotions and and, and you how you pitch that uh, your products and those things right uh, so this is very important to study and 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 if you have the local data you can you can analyze I, I couldn't uh, it was difficult me to uh, I, I tried but I couldn't find any data on these things how what is the the eating pattern of the local, I mean, tourists come to Sri Lanka and how much they spend on, on each food types and these things. All this information are needed if you are going for a real uh, cross, uh, cross cut designing. But uh, this gives you a real insight like where we where we should look at uh, before we uh, jump into this. Right here again, you have the, uh, right, uh, what you call these, uh, uh, the expectation of uh, tourists people who, who are coming as a wellness tourist, you know, you can see there are different segments there, like personal growth and fitness, uh, yoga, these things, spiritual health, uh, the mental uh, relaxation, these areas. So I see there are a lot of attention rather than the physical things. They are the, the higher attentions they pay towards the, uh, the, maybe the mental or spiritual relaxation, stress relief, these areas, and then they spend they're willing to spend quite a lot, and and this data suggests that uh, uh, the the like what do you call the emerging market might be not quite as what we expect. To me, with these all AI and 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 even with the com uh, I mean the quantum computations, the lives in next five years, uh, you believe me, in next five six years, the science is especially even the chemistry and physics going to be a totally different paradigm, right? The innovations uh, will be a very quickly, we'll get new drugs or new things and uh, physiological pathways can be tracked very fast. Uh, so uh, even we cannot think like uh, what would be these certain consumer markets with, uh, in, in five years' times. But 
all these things will generate the, the isolations, loneliness, stress, and and this because we with the society will be more like uh, less interactive and these things more stress, financial uh, stress, even the responsibility stress, those all the like mental related illnesses or disorders will be really increasing trends and, and there will be much more demands or people will be ready to pay a lot uh, on, on these areas. So the proactively we, we should work on these things if we need to at least to catch that market in future, right? And this is the, the we call the, the uh, the shifting diagrams they they have developed. This is again from the same report. You you see how how the when it comes to the wellness system, how they are shifting from the the traditional or we can call it classical uh, the tourism concept to a little bit of like a, a nature centric or a healthy things even the food and beverage. So e each of these sector gives you a different business avenues. So beverage one, the, uh, I mean the food one, and also the clothing, other things, your, uh, what do you call the infrastructures, housings, even the, uh, what do you call the hotel structures, these things also, there might may be such certain uh, changes you can make with that view, right? Giving you a, let's say that you can construct something like pyramid and say that this gives you some energy, something, <laughs> something like that. This is all uh, marketing things with some, a uh, little bit of science you can, uh, do these these things, right? Uh, this is another very uh, very important uh, uh, picture. I, I mean the graph I, I extracted from that. You see, they mentioned in this uh, wellness industry, the each destination has is offering something unique. But can you find anything unique to Sri Lanka? The what we are doing, talking here, the meditation, yoga, and Ayurvedic, this all goes to India. You see, each and every country, they have something unique, unique selling proposition or something unique to cater to the wellness industry, what we have. We haven't marked, I think we have a lot to do, but it's not endorsed. We haven't we have not marketed it. It's not even this, this map, right? This is the internationally circulating document. So people, this now nowadays, they most of these uh, rich people, are they are highly, highly literal. So they read all these things and they get to know these things. So we need, I think if we need to promote the wellness industry, wellness tourism in Sri Lanka, we must be in those, some unique professions in this map, right, in years to come. So maybe the NSF or a, somebody who, who is responsible in making policy should focus on these and may, maybe some interactive sessions or, to have one KPI as to endorse one, one unique, one unique proposition in wellness, in in the uh, wellness sector. Then then we'll be on that. That's why uh, we are is, is still less than one percent on on the wellness sector. So there may be the spa and these things are there, but it's not it's not really our uh, wellness. Uh, what do you call the contribution? Right. Uh, this is again there. Uh, this is the, the same uh, thing with the, the different version, right? Right, then uh, this is all about the data. So now we know where we are. We know there is a huge cake there, like uh, almost 800 uh, USDB billion. And uh, we are getting less than 0.1% out of that. I don't know, I don't have that data. Uh, maybe for solution I can uh, tell that. Is is quite honestly, it's, it would be very small because we have not uh, spotted even in that international things. We are not endorsed. Uh, so, so why is that? But we have spas. We call that we have Ayurveda, the Mahatyas. We have Ayurveda, these things, that things, uh, so many things. But uh, why we cannot end? Why we cannot identify something unique or identical? Most of these things that I listed in black. These are we talk. Uh, most of the times, but we haven't done much on, on and even these words, I mean the traditional medicine, there are, we are using two words, traditional medicine and ind indigenous medicine. I don't know which one is right, how you how you market on that, because we definitely need to uh, differentiate from the Ayurveda, at least for the, for, at least for a marketing purpose, because you know the TCM, you know how, how China is marketed the TCM, traditional Chinese medicine, TCM. Now, all over the world, they know it as a TCM. Within a short span of time, 
right? I, I know this. I got got involved with one of these Chinese university, universities with this uh, biochemistry research also. Within very short period of time, because they had a national level agenda on this, even they get involved with all the, all their uh, natural product scientists. Most of them, they are they are given at least a one plan to work on, right? And develop certain what you call these uh, databases, and and then uh, they publish those, and and that's how there's a holistic agenda they have, not uh, here and there. What you are doing is uh, you when when one scientist want to do something, they just send the proposals to NSF or somewhere, get some funds and do some research and then ship next, next, next. There is a no like continuity and also there's no holistic, there's not no real purpose other than getting some postgraduate or a or a or a maybe some marks on or a publication. So this is not uh, even the fault of the scientist. So I'm a scientist, I'm also a scientist, so it's not a fault of us because we should not have real monitoring or a, what do you call this coordination or a, we should not have master plan. Uh, we don't have a master plan, then for the sake of our profession, so we are doing certain things here and there. At the end of the day, it's very difficult to connect those dots because they are not in lines with, with our real commercial requirements. To get rid of this, we need to plan right at the beginning with the real commercial idea and then you would like uh, stretch it down. Uh, and again, and then even you can get involved with the undergrads and these peoples, uh, they are contribution also again, then you can uh, value them, right? Even with these things, we can develop certain things, but uh, I have different ideas on this. It's not only me, so we are we work as a team. Uh, we, uh, we the one of most important thing is uh, nature centric lifestyles. We had we had that, right? Uh, that's why in the early days, even now you go to these some rural villages. Uh, something like Mimure, now now it's not the real that Mimure, right? I'm talking about the 10 years back Mimure or 13 years back Mimure. You you go there, so you, you find that nobody has any problems other than the snake bites or a problem permanent tree or a, some some sort of that thing. So we call it accident or a, uh, even they, they don't have the microbial things, right? Their main cause of death uh, is a snake bite, problem from the trees or a, some other, other accident. Right. That means there are nothing called NCDs. They even don't know the things called NCDs. That means we we had we have had the very unique uh, nature centric system. Even the Surya Namaskar or yoga, these things or there are very unique things. We we just they are there. You can see even in the, some blogs and people using these things. But we haven't take uh, these things to. I can, I'm not saying that we can straight away use these things in a tourism or a, or a foreign market. But we cannot bring all these values. It's like converting analog into a digital signal, right? The, the people who know the physics, you know, there are certain information loss when you convert it from analog to digital. But that serves the purpose. It's something like that. The tradition, we cannot bring the traditional systems as it is to the, to the modern day commercial market. But we need to shape it. I mean, there are maybe certain values goes out, and it's not exactly the efficient as as, as our tradition system. But that will uh, deliver the, the things that will serve certain values, and then which which is good enough to run a business, right? Uh, so spiritual concept, concepts for relaxed life. This is one of our very important things. So we we had a very unique uh, certain spiritual concept. Even the even these. I am not uh, considering this as a yoga, because when you when you try to term it as a yoga or a meditation, we we uh, like get in, in line with the Indian stuff, and it's very we cannot fight, com compete with them because they the this is a volume we cannot run a volume business, we cannot fight with the China or India with the volume business. So we have to find a very unique, identical niche, high end, high profit sort of a business if you want to sustain in this. So even the change changing like I'm also agree with the use of the word that term like Ceylon, something like similarly we need to ch change or find the alternative. It's not like one day thought. So you need to have stakeholder meetings and brainstorming and likewise you can define certain terms, terminology. These small, small things are also very important. So even it's not I, I think we should not use the word yoga or something like that. We need, we need a different word for that. That is very important. And because we have different value propositions, what we are doing is we are not presenting them attractively. We are not differentiating with, 
with the similar things. Uh, so we need even this spiritual concept. We have a lot of concept. We, you know, there are certain practitioners. Even we can contact. Yeah. Yes. Wellness. Yeah. But but what I am proposing proposing is that should be sort of a like very very transparent. It should be here and there, one here, one there. It's not. It should be very unique. It's like a, let's say the NVQ thing. So you have one set documents, but they have they, they should we should give give them the their relaxation to like play with some areas. But yeah. Ah, yes. Yes. Yeah, the policy level, you, you need a lot of backups. Yeah. Actually, in ecology also, this ecology-related educations, and we call the nature-centric uh, things, silent. Uh, yes, but we, we, we have a lot of potential. I mean, we, the practice things, even the, you can use the traditional practitioners to get involved with, you and how to walk and how to worship and these things and uh, all these things are there but we are not harnessing and we just running behind something else and the third point again the philosophy of living uh, with nature so we are even we are getting harvesting certain fruits from the trees there are certain like rituals and and even collect during collecting the medicines we collect like from one tree you collect in the morning another tree you collect in the evening even I have studied few things. There are even the chemistry or the stereo chemistry uh, principles even behind these things. But uh, we 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 have we we can sell these, right? But we are, unfortunately we are not selling selling these things. You know, yeah, yeah, different, yeah, different. But we are not marketing these things. We are not. There are even scientific publications. I checked that there are the isolated scientific publications on these things. But they are not in 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 a, in line with our commas. Yes, <laughs> yeah, they are. And now, yes, sure. Nowadays, when you try to sell something, the most of the people think that you need all sort of data to get registered in a, what do you call this? Uh, uh, what is that? US FDA or something like that? I will tell you a story. You know, there is something called kombucha. So I'm a basically a beverage line expert. So I know I, I have studied a lot on the kombucha. The kombucha is selling on a lot of health claims. I tested none, no, no, not even a single uh, clinical trial on. There are some few here and there antioxidants and these things, but it is a million worth industry. There is no FDA approval, nothing, no data, no. So we when we when we talk these things to our people, you need. It takes 12 years to validate these things and that's how. It's not. It's how you, even your small publication, how you market it, how your national policies get aligned with these things and how that industries get in line with them, they, how they use that material for their promotions. That's all. When you, if you can position something in the heads of these uh, like consumers with that segment, that 12% segment, then you can sell the product. They are not going behind this lot of, lot of scientific information. Yeah, even even we can we can do some small like study just to prove that this is in line with the Western science. But you don't need like yeah, that is it. But we can do some that that's the role of science. That's my whole whole topic about today, right? So that as a scientist, what we can do is we can get, fill these small gaps. It should not be a massive research, right? You if you can do a but this should be all, all in a line. Right. If you can do this in that that alignment and and uh, promote it well, yeah, then you can uh, harness most of these uh, uh, values that you can get out of these things. Right. Then uh, actually, we have discussed some part of these things. How 
how we can surface this unique concept for commercial space. We have a lot of uh, resources, concepts, or uh, materials. The thing is how we can bring those to the commercial, how we can surface them, right? We are here, we are proposing a model, right? This, this is only a model, right? We are proposing, we have done certain things, very small, small things, uh, and uh, we are still trying to uh, develop certain companies also on this. First thing, you know, this traditional know-how. There are a lot of uh, places here yeah, where you can get the traditional know-how. Uh, you have practitioners, you know, even the Vedama, even the Devale Kapu Mahathya, I'm telling you, right? They have a lot of uh, knowledge bases. They have a lot of things. Even, even you can make a million business if you are like tap it <laughs> well with, right? And, uh, and then using these, but... But most important thing is me make this a pain naikal. Sorry. How we can move this? Right. But this is the most important part. Right. Uh, most important calamika. What should be? It should be a multidisciplinary approach. Right. You know, these knowledge are there with the most the traditional people or a villages, maybe the Kapu Mahatya, Veda Mahatya, you name it, Pansalaya, Amdru, Mantarakarya, whoever. Right. They are not ready to give it to us. That's because they have been cheated for years. I know, personally, I know we have, even we have approaches uh, so many of these Veda Mahathurus and even we have tried, we have signed agreements, there. There, there are a lot of experience behind us. Not just come and talk to you here, <laughs> right? We have tried this and we have failed. We are still trying. Uh, but there are a wealth of knowledge. A lot of knowledge. We, which, if you can tap them, million you can earn. But these ideas, as it is, you cannot use. Then you need to have the concept creators. That is where you, me, we all can. Because you need to have a bit of the formal, educate, formal educated people just to put these into the papers right, and shape it and, and, and develop into a workable models and experiment, experimental sort of test, testable things and, and, and this. And while you are doing this, I am telling you again, if you are trying this, you should know that this is a totally commercial process. So you cannot just ignore the Veda Mahatya or Kapu Mahatya and getting this his ideas and... Uh, only you become a rich. When you are trying to get cheat him, you can cheat him. You cannot run this. This is for our experience, this is what has happened. So the that's why even certain Vedamatrus, they even don't like the university people. When they are going there, they are chasing. <laughs> There are so many projects, you know, this World Bank uh, traditional knowledge project, not that in heritage, me heritage. I don't remember the names. There are millions of, uh, maybe 10, 15 projects, international projects, ran in this country, specifically targeting the traditional knowledge and uh, these areas. But uh, I know there are certain uh, certain plans, even the Kotal Himbut went uh, out as that. There are certain other small, small things. We know that <laughs> we are not uh, I mean, complaining with this, but most of these, uh, they will not succeed because they try to ignore uh, the value chain, the basic main point of the value chain, and they try to grab the uh, the things to their hands, not to share. Right? At the beginning, you should be ready to share. There should be a, what you call the formal procedure. Since most of these our government agencies are in, get in, need to get involved, there should be a formal procedures to, transparent procedures to share the benefits and things and then there should be a facilitation to get into the ppp private public partnerships and these things uh, these are the lacking areas that's why these things are not happening it's not merely on the uh, not the uh, knowledge things there are certain other what you call the logistics these logistics are not facilitating these sort of a multidisciplinary uh, approaches right when there is a con concept creators then you need to do a proof of concept these are technical things. I'm not going to go into a lot of details. So you need to do a proof of concept. Where even for the proof of concept, you need a little bit bigger team like IP lawyers, IP experts, 
certain uh, accounting people and these things and and then you know that you you can you can make this into a business right when you have the proof of concepts then you go to the this you need to do the validation here not the validation as i as you me expected you don't need to do all the physiological pathways that this this right it's so it's similar thing like uh, kombucha and also you know this alla vallavai now very popular tourist destination who who uh, popularized this alla vallavai how the tourist destination ek idhe develop kare dannawa kohonda mokadde ge kathawa kiyala tourist board ekak nawe kavuruth nawe non of some person persons that is, is you know is based on the very old traditional story it's a, based on the ravana story so they are they are telling that the world best oxygen is there how they check karan who come and test that apita me science la we have different concept on our heads if it is a science it should be old tested no it's not it's, it's a human human consciousness apita ara india ay chitrapati palana dam him poli ekak udaya neva industry it's not thrilling the human consciousness is not always getting this old truths no ap yara abhyakasha katha balanna kemithi nadda e film industry ga develop wenna nadda thrill wenna nadda ay api itarak hodanna api ayurvedi hari hela medicine itarak kai should be tested to the a b c with the genes that 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 why you are thinking like that it's not is how you position there how you position on the head of these people how you market it how you bring that is all depend on this if the marketers sir yes yes other companies yeah we are not they are they are using it actually we have we, i am telling you we have something interesting in this land so you know the tea is not ours tea is introduced cinnamon you know cinnamon na there but it's it's different you know the moringa moringa is not indigenous but you know what happened to the composition you know what happened to the uh, what do you call this scavenger special glama it's become anamalu right we have some uniqueness in this land the other peoples are they, they know quite a lot on this because like 10 years back one uh, scandinavian a uh, lady came to us in dr sudarshan is there on good friend of mine who did this the, the, all these things they like a cannabis sort experiment act they want to do a cannabis experiment here this is this was 10 years back because they thought that there is some microorganism in this soils which is producing lot of uh, 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 what do you call these uh, cannabidiols right but i know we know it's it's not the microbes we have done certain research it's not the microbes something else but we have some uniqueness then are in in the map you they are telling that we have lowest gravity point ka kila lanka why we are not selling that how they will gravity check karan if you are promoting that this is the lowest gravity so you you can go to the heaven why you are not promoting right See, it, 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 it is not us it's nasa is telling that well highest scientific entity is telling that this is the lowest gravity we just sit on that why you are not promoting on this this is one of good points this, this included in our uh, our uh, project also why we are not promoting that this you can just really relax maybe actually can be relax we do not know but how you can test it is simply a marketing based on a small scientific truth this this is the mystery i mean this is the sad part of us so all the scientists also we think that you need to clarify everything it's not so if we can implant something very useful i mean useful to them you can send it but after this validation then you need to go to popularization this is what we are not doing even a small scientific thing is good enough if you pitch it right so we we need a marketers we need advertise we have very good young click of advertising people here very good young click right so but we are not make use in them we just we api kolana bana banina ka thamai karana mona dara da hadana sindu gela etchara it's not the way right the, it's always the elder responsible to elder generation or older generations to guide the other promoter and us the, the the next gen right so this most next thing is the commercialization popularization when you have when you popularize this then you can develop the 
the uh, commercial model. Ah, this is a bit messy. Right. Then, then you need to go for a commercial model. This is another thing that most of our scientists are not doing. Right. Then you need accountant. You need business people. Right. Uh, marketing service and these these things and sit with them and then develop the your capital cost, your recurrence. If it is a product, your cost of production. If it is a service, again cost of productions and proportions. The, the cost of the similar services, competitiveness analysis, you need to do all sorts of these things. Right? Then, if there are certain gaps, then you need to go back to your concept. If that is not commercially viable model, I mean, when you do a commercial modeling, then you, you see that it's a too high capital. You cannot do that. You cannot recover that capital. Then you can go back to the concept. right? And then you can do certain adjustment to cut down certain capitals and then uh, you can reshape it. That, this we call the reshaping. That's why we include the title as a reshaping. It's not the same shape. We reshape it to two purposes. One is to match the, to cater the value to the modern society. Second thing is to, to fit with the financial feasibility. Actually, environment other thing is third and fourth. Whatever the environment feasible or not, if it is not commercially feasible, it's out. If it is not going to deliver something, it's out. These two things very is are the key at the beginning when you are develop, developing a this sort of a traditional thing into a commercial concept. Then you can go for a investments, and then only you can the sustainability and. It's very difficult to do this. Then then you can then you come to the sustainability and evolution because evolution is a. It's a natural thing, so you cannot sell a one similar product or a thing for over the period of time. There should be a natural way of uh, natural evolution, so it's all depend on the feedback and these things. So you you can you you need to house a continuous R and D team or a, a concept creators there with your team, and gradually you you shape it up. You change it uh, to depend on the requirements or uh, conditions of your community or your buyers. Okay, that's all about this basic concept. Right now, uh, we I'm going to discuss a bit on our, our concept. So it's basically... Right, you know the uh, concept of spiritual gardens. There are concept. This is existing concept. Yeah, I can. Yeah, yeah, in, in, in Indonesia, Japan, uh, and the US, and even the Scotland, they have this. This is this is actually our concept. You know, this 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 is our company. is This is our Rajakali Uyana. Right? Make a Uyana now they are marketing this in the wellness industry. Even we have not tagged. This is a spiritual garden. This is not, not a new concept. This is a, even the concept that well known to the West. And also the concept that we had in our traditions, right? So we are proposing to modify this. We are titled this as like this. Or superior. This is just a title tag. So even in the commercial modeling, this can be changed. So it's up to the developers who, who generally uh, going to develop this uh, tagline. Yes, good. But this is the little bit bigger, bigger story. So here we are thinking about 150 acres or something like that because we need to make up isolation something. This, this is a basically spiritual uh, philosophical concept, uh, right? Uh, this is this example, right? How you can think and, and generate uh, certain commercial things. This, the theme behind this is the spirits and value of traditional Hela philosophy. I use the word Hela, don't worry on this because we need some unique mark, demarcation on this. Even you say the traditional or indigenous, it's get mixed up with a lot of things. So you see how the Chinese get, came up with the TCM. So we, we need a certain uh, terminology to come up with. So I'm not expert on that area. So 
generally we are using the hello, hello philosophy. We had the really hello philosophy on, on, on the life and the nature and these things. There are certain values. There are few people working with us on this, right? Uh, then we can couple this with our herbal medicines, functional foods and for the healthy living. This is all about this, right? Uh, so here you can target. We have even coupled with this educational tourism also. Uh, and then educational and ecological tourism. So we're going to couple this with the, even with a bit of ecology, uh, awareness on ecology, biodiversity, that one, or again, with the wellness. And uh, beneficiaries can be, yes, tourism immunology, obviously. Uh, here, actually, we use the participatory approaches in this. We propose to use the participatory approaches, especially for food. The, the village around, they will uh, produce the food, uh, the food stuff, the cooking will be, uh, in, in like individual base, something like that. And then it's a basically participatory approach we are proposing, but this is not hard and fast. So depending on the locations and your scopes, you can change. The flexibility should be there. You cannot just be the, the hard on one concept is not, go, not going to work, right? And also there should be avenue for even the academy and researchers to do a bit more research and then things like uh, generate data, uh, even with the visitors, you can generate the data and about the plants. Uh, you can use certain hundred odd plants in these plant her herbal gardens. And these things you can uh, use in future things, right? This is about the detailed model. So I'm not going to discuss all detailed models. You see there are different things. So we'll have, uh, in this concept, concepts, we, we basically propose the isolations. But even you can do this in a group. So maybe one, one area where you can have like uh, two, three peoples. And you know, there is a, uh, what you call the traditional belief that why they, they live in the undergrounds or in a, in a Galguha. A Galguha, it's a thriving time, ancient time, why most of these people are live in the Galguha. This is again, they are a better oxygen story also behind that. Because this silica, silica in this is all stone caves, there is a capacity to absorb so many waves. And also there is a capacity to retain certain waves. So when you are stressed, when you are sit inside this cave, so you, you, you come to this some sort of a electromagnetic balance. You can do a small research on that, this publish, and then you can promote that. These are the value professions we have, right? In this, in this case, actually, we are, we are proposing, it's actually here, it's a combination of fire, water, uh, fire, water, air, uh, and what? Yeah, five elements. We are, we, are, we are talking about the five elements and how you balance the five elements. Even the location should be in balance with the, you know this, our, our, when, you, when you get fatigued, you can be refreshed by air and water. In addition, here we use the micro radiation source. So you align certain things with the Galgu and these things where you, you create certain uh, micro environment where you can get this radiation relief, right? Along with that, so they have been walking paths, gravel paths and aromatherapy, uh, traditional food, traditional rice. These things you can couple into your model, but basic model basically on this the philosophy of, of the life with the nature. So other things, even you can, even this handcraft you can bring into this model, so possible. But there should be a nucleus on in, in, in any sort of model. In this one, the nucleus is this uh, live with nature concept, right? Uh, all these things, uh, you, you name it, even the Surya Namaskar, uh, meditation. I use the word meditation, but uh, we, should, we need to find a, like different uh, terminology for this. If you need to make a value, unique value proposition out of this. Right, then uh, this is the really the uh, working model. You have village and then you have ABC. Uh, a is maybe a company even, B maybe a practitioner. Uh, that's how. Uh, so you, you, you can name like uh, C maybe the again community group, but there should be people who can provide the technology and also the traditional knowledge and also then this is then then this is become by SPV or a JV. Uh, this they, uh, they if it is if you say it is a superior project, it's not the single owner proprietary. 
is a basically a SPV or a JV or our government private public partnership, something like that, where you have a lot of this again with an attack of the Navahila, the other thing tourists point to that negative and tourism sector, right? Uh, this all these things align, so then you with this you can develop the unique value, unique value proposition for uh, tourist wellness tourist industry. This is one important thing that you can do when you have some project like this, right? Uh, this is actually example. If you do it at bigger scale, then you can develop the unique value proposition uh, UEP for the industry. Then, then we can say so. We are doing the some stress relaxation. This sleep is one of lead, all leading problem nowadays. If you can find something that make you good sleep, that's why the cannabis is like uh, selling in most of these countries. They, the CGN people, I mean, the younger generation, they are using this as a, a sleep promoter. So if we can develop this uh, center as a wellness center, just to, when you stay two days there, you can sleep well for another year or six months, something like that. They should give a half life, like in, like in a drug. That the continuously they should come. If you put it into their head, it's a placebo. You know, most of medical people, so <laughs> this is a placebo, <laughs> right? When you establish that placebo, right, you have continuous uh, like uh, customers, like uh, dropping this blood glucose level from 200, 200, 125 to 100. <laughs> uh-huh. Mm. Can be, yes. But that is not going to that level that we need. It's not endorsed somewhere, somewhere in the documentation and these things. It's not international. Ah, okay. Yeah, but yeah, but only that place. So it's not, that is the reason. We, I'm talking about the national level hit. So it should be not the single people. Yeah. Yes, we can do. So then this, this should be some government policy to have these sort of centers, maybe 50 like this, this, then we call for investment, something like that. No, 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 should not be that. That's where you need the consultant and, and creators with, with these all, uh, this knowledge and empathy. Uh, yes. Yeah. This is all holistic concept. This is actually one example, even you can design for a, beverage, food, even Kiribat, you can modify to say some good things and and, and then not only in a one place Kiribat, that should be a like network. In a Kargis food, this is like when you tourists come, there should be some many, that, that, that also you can calculate and see, depend on the business model, how many centers you need to have to run it sustainably. <laughs> Because we are a small country, yeah. Ah, okay. So you have a Yes. But this should be document and it should come to the national level. That's what I'm telling. I know there are even like Dilmati. That 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 is the personal capacity. But after that, we haven't done that branding. Yeah, but yeah, yes, yes. We we call it non dairy non dairy milk is there's a huge demand for. Us. Yes, because uh, these are the individual entrepreneur success stories. That's not because of the policies. So we want to like emphasize the policy makers and. This uh, set up to have this to the next level. Okay, right. That's all. So, <laughs> thank you. If you have any questions, I'm I'm really willing to answer. Thank you very much, sir. Any questions from the audience?
young people has patents, but they are not connected with the business module. They are selling patent, which I think this, uh, what you spoke has to go. The second one is uh, the brand development, you said, uh, which I think it has to be documented because uh, one of the thing is Sri Lanka's most popular female, I don't know anyone knows, is not anyone, it's Mrs. Pereira, that is Ratti. It was the brand was developed by an Indian advertiser. So that's how the, when they did the research last year to find out who's the most popular woman in Sri Lanka. No, this is a research actually, uh, it was Santosh Menon who did it. It became Mrs. Pereira. How we, they have made a household name. So whatever you said, which is really true, we are not talking or research and science, not talking about a business module. We need to put patents, not on document, make it a business module. I think we are one of the examples because a lot of people come to me with patent young people and I always say no, if you can't make a business on that. It's from the innovation invention to commercialization. So you, you have you know, like innovation, uh, you can just trade in, but it's when you come to the, the invention, but you come to the innovation and commercialization. And next, most important thing, even the, after commercializing is sustainability. You just say there are so many startups, maybe you now 100 startups. Out of 100 startups, just check out of five years, how many remain? Maybe one. Fortunate to have one. Thank you very much, sir. And thank you very much, madam, Dr. Sekera, for that insightful ideas as well. And uh, Dr. Rana Singer, please come. You have a token of appreciation. And I would like to invite Professor Swarna Hapuarachi from Faculty of Indigenous Medicine, University of Colombo, to present the token of appreciation. And also, I would like to invite Professor Usha Hetiarachi. Professor in Biochemistry of University of Sri Javarthanapura to present the certificate to Dr. Rana Singha. And Dr. Himali De Silva, the treasurer of Sri Lanka National Chapter or WSD to present the letter of appreciation. And as usual, Dr. Thilina Vanikasekara, the president of Sri Lanka National Chapter or WSD to present the gift from OWSD. Thank you. Thank you very much. And next up is our lunch break. And before that, uh, several announcements are to be made. So we have two more insightful sessions from Dr. Sepali Kasul Singer and Dr. Himari Di Silva. So we kindly request you to gather that knowledge as well, because that will be a continuation of what we discussed throughout the day in previous sessions. And yes, we have a group photograph. So we invite all of you to this area. Yes, madam. Yes, uh, come front to take the group photograph and you can have your lunch and uh, yes, come back again for the formal sessions. Thank you.
Recording stopped.
Welcome back after the formal lunch break and we're about to proceed with the next session, the role of women in science and technology for the sustainable tourism industry in Sri Lanka, policy reforms for the business startups and technological innovations in the tourism industry. I would like to invite Dr. Sepalika Sudhasingha, the NSF Director General, and as usual to read out the citations, I would like to invite Dr. Thilina Vanika Sekara. Madam, it's over to you. Thank you, Charita. So let me welcome Dr. Sepalika Sudhasingha, Director General, National Science Foundation. I'm privileged to read her citation on this day. Dr. Sudhasingha received her basic degree from Sri Javadanapur University and completed her postgraduate diploma in economic development and master's in economics from the University of Colombo and her PhD in Development Administration, specialized in public policy management from the National Institute of Development Administration, Thailand. She is a visiting professor, personnel in management and doctoral advisor to Management and Science University, Malaysia, and maintain a strong link with cordial relationships with many local and global academic institutions and training organizations in the field of public policy, administration, and management. Dr. Sepalika has served as the additional director general and the head of the School of Postgraduate Studies of Sri Lanka Institute of Development Administration, you call it SLIDA, before joining the NSF. She is a proactive and highly professional individual who is having a sound track record of more than 30 years in public sector in academic, teaching, research, and administrative fields. As an academic and a practitioner in the Sri Lanka public service, she contributes her knowledge in training of senior civil servants, policy and military officers in Sri Lanka and abroad. She has also served as a principal consultant for several national policy population committees and several high level committees in the government. She is an award winner about the Professional and Career Women Award in 2018 for leadership excellence for her exceptional contribution and achievement in the period of state and government sector organized by women in management. It was partnership with the International Finance Corporation, a member of the World Bank Group. Dear Madam, podium is over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tilina. So good afternoon, everybody. After a heavy lunch, I guess. So I try my best to make it within a short period of time, simply because I have another commitment also within a short period of time. So the topic is about, it's about role of women in science. It's all about all of you, including I myself. And Women in science and technology for sustainable, it's, an, it's, a, it's for a specific industry, sustainable tourism industry. Specifically, we'll be discussing about, I'll be highlighting the points to be considered. We might have missed those uh, policy reforms for businesses, startups, and technology innovations. So uh, let me start with like, what's the role of science and technology? Why do we nowadays this much talked about science and technology? So for us, it's the same science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, right? So why stem this much important? Why do we this much talked about STEM subjects? So, so since the topic is about STEM and its contribution to the industry and the economic development, I'm not talking about the other areas because I have to, this is one of my limitations, right? Because someone would ask, is it only about STEM, but why not about other social sciences? Yes, 
that is the place where I talked about steam. Right? Okay. Now, steam, when we talked about steam, even as a country, we promote these subjects for a reason. And we strongly believe there are gaps in the specialists in these subjects. And at the same time, we believe that these fields facilitate support for creative thinking, right? Strengthen the conceptual thinking and it strengthen the experts for innovations and other business startups. So actually, it is, I mean, we commonly believe for a country to develop, this actually facilitates all the, the economic growth theories, even from the economic subject also, we can justify this. So it is strongly believed this area has to be strengthened in an, any country if you want to reach to a sustainable economic development or else sustainable growth. So my second point. So uh, earlier I said it's the STEM and why do we need STEM subjects and the subject specialists? And the second point is we want to have the people with out of box thinking skills, right? That is entrepreneurs with entrepreneurial skills in the country if you want to positively support for the economic development of the country. So it's about the entrepreneurship. We, we would say for to be a I mean the successful entrepreneur, you should have three basic skills. You know it's it's not the knowledge, right? But it's the skill and the attitudes, right? Knowledge, skills, and atti attitudes. So from a study program or a training program, we will be reaching to, and our targets are to develop knowledge and to sorry, develop skills and attitudes. So to be an entrepreneur, successful entrepreneur, we have to have skills in innovations, proactiveness, and entrepreneurial, or to, I mean, the reach to the target within a short period of time. So this, we believe that from STEM subjects, we can easily develop entrepreneurs to an economy. So that's why we always say entrepreneurship plays a vital role in economic development. So this has a broad area I'm not going to talk about, but still, because this is very important to have at every level, right? This is not about the top level. This is not about the middle level. It's a, more about the grassroots level, entrepreneurial skills of the men and women, the community people and the citizens of that country to positively support for economic growth and development. So our topic is about, not in general, but specifically about women and girls, specifically women in an economy, how important their participation to an economic growth. So when you talked about our country, statistics proves that we, it's all about 50-50. Right, I think from today, the Dr. Suranga's presentation, he highlighted the composition in the labor force, women, and what is their proportionately contribution to the growth and development of the country. So that very clearly showed there is a gap 
for different reasons. That's because of different reasons, right? So, although women account for a half of the percentage wise in the labor force, I'm referring to the labor force participation, right? But women contribution to the economic activities, according to research, relatively low, relatively, right? So there is a gap. We have to identify what are the gaps, understanding the gaps only, we can make policy recommendations. And the other thing is, according to the Global Entrepreneurship uh, Monitors uh, Women's Entrepreneurship Index, so this, this document is available, Sri Lanka ranked at the 62 the level, the globally in 2021. This document is available. This gives us a lot of information and insights. If you want to work in the gender-related, specifically women's studies, the areas to be touched, areas to be identified, areas to be highlighted during policy discussions. So, this is one of the concerns, and I would like to draw your attention for this point as well. Second is, I mean, we are talking about to what extent the macro level policy decisions have, I mean, addressed, and do we have a space to work? So actually, so I have a, uh, taken this information from the this year's budget speech. So in the 82, under the 82 point, the HE talks about the creative economy, right? So we have a space. Now we have to have different projects and programs in line with this in the present context. There is a space given, right? For I mean the to for a creative and interventions towards the positively contributing to the economic growth and the development of the country. Now this is one of the places, the spaces, the STEM experts, scientists in our field, in our, our generation should look into. So it's very clearly says, creativity plays an important role in culture and society. And the foundation of the creative economy, that's what I said. So if you want to grow the country, facilitate, strengthen the economic development of the country, that has to be a creative economy with entrepreneurs, with entrepreneurial skills, but we are talking about women. And economies, technology, and innovation. No other, I mean, the, it's very clearly given. And also, therefore, I invite relevant stakeholders, our groups like this, to take the lead in creating collaboration between creative spaces, industry, and academia, right? And the government is ready to assist in building the creative economy of Sri Lanka. It's a budget speech. So that means the government as a policy has recognized how important these areas. Next. But to the macro level, the focus is that we still see there are a lot of barriers, a lot of gaps in the field specifically in the STEM field with regard to the, I mean, the specifically for women, right? These are all common challenges, but it says, I mean, according to the research and the statistics, we know this, actually the girls and women, right? They are underrepresented in the fields of science, technology, engineering, and 
mathematics. So that's why the government as a policy has launched in the educational reforms, the STEAM approach to school system. It's basically started with the school system. That's why the educational reforms going on. So it is just because the professions in STEM fields are majority dominated by men and women find it difficult to match up to them in these fields. What is the reason? These are all common reasons. I think in the morning to, I mean, the, I could listen to three, two speeches. They all highlighted these barriers, which I think that I don't have to, but these barriers to be um, addressed, if you are to, uh, I hope that if you want to develop a policy brief as a product of this forum, right? So I think there were so many policy insights and implications highlighted by different I mean, experts. So for that policy brief, as the first part, we have to highlight what are the barriers for women to be actively participate as entrepreneurs in the system towards the economic development of the country. So according to the World Bank report 2020 on based on 2020 statistics, 2022 report says women account for only 28% of engineering graduates and the fields like artificial intelligence, only one on five professionals are female. So this is the place where our academic community should look into. It should start from, of course, from the school system, right? But this has to be a concern of our intellectuals and academics if we want to fill these gaps. So therefore, there are likewise, there are so many gaps in the system for you and me, for us to work as entrepreneurs to support others at the grassroots level, right? So I always believe in work, but not the certificates. I'm not referring to PhDs, masters, or I mean the graduate studies, but whoever who comes should be in a position access to upskilling, improving their skills in these fields. So there are so many other challenges. These are all taken from research work because I just want to talk based on evidence. So it says that in most households, women are major, mostly responsible for running the family. That's true. There are, as academics, so I'm a partially an academic, we see the efforts and the struggle of women when it's come to studying, completing their research, the dissertations and all, it is actually a struggle. So we have to have policy level interventions to look into this. Can we have official leave specifically for these categories to complete their studies? Don't know, I'm, I'm just highlighting these points because they play different roles, not two or three, right? So therefore, these type of policy forums, strong organizations look into these matters. So without addressing to the barriers, we will never ever be able to ensure or reach to the targets that we are expecting from the country. So and also, this discrimination is faced especially by marginalized women, girls from disadvantaged groups, elderly women, according to the United 
nations, right? So we, I mean, the we think that it's we are in a better status. But if you look into the statistics, but when it's come to the some of the macro level statistics, we don't see actually the exact picture of us because we always look into the number of girls and boys in the school system at let's say advanced level right that's the macro picture but when you i mean the look into the micro level regional disparities right so that you can't generalize so therefore i believe that when it's come to the policy level interventions that has to be not like I mean, the covering the macro level issues, but it's like the pockets. I mean, the it's like poverty pockets, right? We have to look into the specific areas, specific problems, and that has to be addressed because in general, the picture is beautiful. Even when it's come to Sri Lankan context, also the same, right? So on the whole, it is, reported that there is a barrier to women dreaming for a successful careers, right? And specifically to their field of interests. So therefore, I think we have to look into different ways, right? There's no any hard, in the society, we always say, we have wicked problems. These are all wicked problems because it has multidimensional aspects. So therefore, we have to reach to that from different ways. So that's why when we talk the same topic, I mean, the, when we listen to the same topic from different, exp I mean, the experts, they come out with different solutions because the problem is it's a wicked problem. Actually, we need multidimensional approach in address to addressing to this. Anyway, I would like to draw your attention to this statement, World Economic Forum has highlighted that the whole world's GDP can be increased by this amount by 2025 by closing the gender gap in economic participation by 25% over the same period. Look here, I think this really explains, shows us how important the subject area that we are referring to. So that means organizations like this, right? We have to look into collectively this matter and take this to the decision makers in the country to draw their attention. And this has to be in the agendas of, I think the influential groups and women can do that, right? If this sees the story, so why not we look into that? So the next is, from talking about why the STEM subjects are important, why that is important in developing a country, why from that the entrepreneurship development is important to an, any country, specifically women, if they are not represented, we should take measures in representing them in the mainstream. And from that, we are taking and we are considering the specific industry that we are looking to today. It's the tourism industry. I think from the morning, the professors highlighted how important this industry, how important to strengthen this industry in the country to strengthen to contribute to the GDP. So we all know it's the third contributor to the GDP of the country, right? If that is the third contributor, 
So why don't we, right? Why not we think about the common concerns and the challenges and to strengthen this industry, right? So at the same time, it is evident from the research work, so in that particular, this much of important, in this industry, the participation of women is relatively low. So it says lack of women participation in the industry. So there we are now, right? What shall we do, right? If the unemployability is high, if the women, they are underemployed, if we have considerable, I mean, the women in the industry educated, so education is not really the certificates, right? So if the, the research statistics says that the in the Sri Lanka's labor market, the women in the travel tourism industry is relatively low, that is a concern we have to consider that as well. And also, it is just a third point, but at the same time, it says globally, the tourism sector has been known to provide employment on a large scale to women and youth. It really shows that there is a mismatch here, right? If the, I mean, the, if that, if this particular industry provides a lot of employment opportunities to women, why not in Sri Lanka, right? As we highlighted some cultural barriers. So these are the things that we, points that we have to address, but very carefully, right? So women make up about 70% of the workforce of the tourism industry across the world. Right? So these are some of the barriers we have. These are all are common to South Asian and Asian countries. So we are culturally, the way that we think and work and I mean, the, we are a little different. So we have to identify some of our strengths and the weaknesses as well. We can't change and address to the, all these over a night. But that's why I said at the very beginning also, from the programs, it's not only the knowledge, I'm not referring to academic programs, but the skills and the third is the attitudes, the way that we think. I think we had, I mean, the good discussions during the presentations, the way that we should, I mean, the, look at certain things as barriers, the, some of the areas that we are, I mean, we define differently, that can happen, right? But anyway, however, in Sri Lanka, there are several barriers to women participation in the tourism sector, according to research work. Those are all, as I said, common barriers, and we have to look into those. I think we can conduct research work but anyway, I mean, the, we should, I always believe we have already the evidence. We don't have to invent the wheel again. With the information that we have already with us, why not we work? So, specifically to the tourism industry, some of the barriers have highlighted from the Sri Lanka Startup Report 2019. According to this report, right, businesses and startups and technology innovations, when we talked about women and girls and 
women entrepreneurs. It says, as the startup ecosystem in Sri Lanka is predominantly tech-oriented, this has organically resulted in a male-dominated ecosystem. This is about us, right? We have to understand this. So while women are involved in the tech industry, they fail to be included in the respective circles, which, uh, which to an extent is by choice. However, a main reason is cultural limitations. This is what the 2019 Sri Lanka Startup Report says, right? So if we want to promote businesses, startups in the field of tourism and hospitality sector, so these are some of the barriers. At the same time, the report says, it should be noted that many non-tech tech startups focusing on food and beverages, health and wellness, and fashion are mostly female dominated. Either we should look into the areas that mostly in our culture, the women can comfortably get involved, right? Changing the culture is not that easy. Organizational culture, the country's culture, is the way that you work, walk, talk, and it's your behavior. It's difficult. But if we see within that particular culture, if we can promote certain industries where male or women can, female can get involved and work and start up their businesses, so we have to create a conducive environment for them to work. Right? So therefore, it further says awareness on these issues would help shed light on female talent and increase representation in the startup space. Look here, sometimes the awareness programs and working with grassroots level people from sky to the grassroots level, it's very important. This is what I always believe. However, it is a question always, do we need more women in STEM, right? It's about startup, right? So as Sri Lanka navigates this economic crisis, addressing to the gender gap in STEM field is more crucial than ever according to the report. So therefore, so within the STEM, Right, So we believe that we are scientists. We have to take this message seriously and we should get together and have different methods and initiatives, maybe as programs and projects to look into these measures. Because it is said that addressing the gender gap in the country in the process of strengthening the country's economy, women, women participation in the labor force as entrepreneurs at grassroots level, it's very important. And what's, what are the necessary steps? What type of policy recommendations on the basis of the information that we have reviewed that we can propose. Because I would like to talk about the women in the role of women in science and technology in strengthening the uh, tourism industry as a fast growing industry in the country and what type of policy level implications, recommendations that we can discuss and make. So the number one, the women in science and technology should be, should have measures 
in closing the gender gap in STEM in Sri Lanka. It will require targeted and continued effort in the society as institutions at operational level as, I mean, the operational frameworks of STEM fields, right? So I think, I mean, all the now, for an example, so under the Ministry of Education, we have cluster of scientific organizations. So when we design and plan things, I think we have to have a space in addressing to this gap as well. Like national institutes, we must develop upskilling programs. Can easily, because all these 14 organizations, if they can promote one program from each organization, right? So that will be benefited in addressing to that, this gap. So that can be according to their mandates, according to their, I mean, the scope of the organization. That has to be operationalized. You can't, I mean, the proposed, I mean, the, I mean, the specific programs. However, the National Science Foundation, so all of you may, I mean, the, I didn't have identified it as a research funding organization, but apart from that, we have another mandate which is very strong and we promote and popularize science. STEM specifically, and nowadays with the, in collaboration with the Ministry of Education, it's the STEAM. We have several programs in promoting science and STEM that we call the STEAM. Because as I highlighted at the very beginning, it has to be multidisciplinary because we should, it's, it's, it has to be an integrated approach of all the social sciences and the natural sciences because the problems that we see in the um, at the grassroots level, we might not be able to address from the natural sciences only. So the political sciences or the economics or the management or the other subjects also should come in too. I mean, in addressing to the problems at the grassroots level. So as a National Science Foundation, this is one of the initiatives that we have taken in addressing to this. Apart from that, we have uh, taken some other initiatives also, like, I mean, the facilitating development of, I mean, the curriculum of different levels and so many other things which I don't want to discuss about, but we have started because we see that there is a strong research community according to our statistics, R&D survey. So there are so many number wise. I mean, the research studies going on, but not specifically on this topic, but they are all researchers, scientists in the field. And from out from them, it's almost the 50-50 male and female. So that means we have a strong community of researchers, intellectuals, academics, scientists, female in our system who can positively contribute. So with understanding that, I believe that women in science can change the world if we can hand in hand work in future. So <clears throat> future, I'm referring to all the cluster organizations, the future of STEM must belong to all of us. So therefore, in closing the gender gaps, and we have, I think for the next year program, we have started some uh, programs with, I mean, the female scientists to support the grassroots level entrepreneurs, women identifying. It's a, I mean, the work with 
divisional secretariat at divisional level to reach to the grassroots level. So there is a gap. Actually, we have identified and seen in this society. Some one of the groups in the clouds and some of them are at the grassroots level. So there has to be a bridge in filling this gap. We have started some programs and I don't want to highlight or explain all this, but we believe women in science and our scientists female, so they should work collaboratively, support the grassroots level women entrepreneurs right, as mentors maybe to, I mean, the support their initiatives so they are growing with the scientists. So therefore, I think these are feasible, can, so I'm ready, I mean, the most of our groups are ready to work with us. Apart from that, we have other, some other programs also. But anyway, I think in the morning, one highlighted whether we have an institutional framework for, in supporting for this work, right? Yes, I think the national tourism policy, which is the policy directive of the government, that is at the grassroots, uh, the draft format, I guess, but that will be a reality in very soon. So I think the ministry representatives are also there. So in the policy document, the fourth point, the policy statement says, the government shall, and they ensure the digital transformation of Sri Lankan, Sri Lanka tourism, assuring, assuring tourism safety and expanding the innovation capacity, the industry in order to facilitate investment based investments based on open innovation infrastructure or new technology facilitating local innovation ecosystems. So this is the fourth policy statement in the tourism policy. So that means the government or the tourism ministry has accepted STEM has to be within the tourism industry, right? So with that, let me conclude highlighting one of our programs. This is an this is NSF program for women in engineering, science and technology, best program. It's a kind of upskilling program. So this is also added to our work identifying these gaps. So let me conclude saying the topic is role of women in science. Role of women in science is unlimited, right? So specifically when it's come to the economic development, women in science at every level, top, middle, grassroots, right? So it's unlimited. They are very important and they should support each other. They should look into the concerns and the problems of the society. So maybe the top level academics, maybe the grassroots level practitioners, they have to play different roles. So they have a vital role in the economy to strengthen the economic development of the country. Second is women in science, we have a vital role in strengthening the third strongest industry in our country, which is the economy, which is the tourism industry in supporting, strengthening the GDP of the country. So women in science, maybe the researchers, we have to identify the gaps in the subject and should make policy recommendations to the decision makers. And that has to be in the policy agendas. In the policy cycle, the first step is the agenda setting. 
we have to pass this information to the I mean the decision makers agenda. So that's why I highlighted we need policy briefs. I think from this discussions, we can develop a policy brief to hand over this to a particular decision makers, maybe the decision maker of the country. So it's the strength of all of us. So therefore, women in science has, a, I mean, we have a vital role in strengthening the economic development of the country and specifically strengthening the third strongest industry in the country, which is the tourism industry. So with that brief note, let me wind up. So thank you all of you. And if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Madam. Dr. Sepalika Sudha Singha, the Director General of National Science Foundation. Any questions from the audience? Right. Okay. So to proceed with, uh, I would like to invite Dr. Sepalika Sudha Singh, Madam, please come front to receive the token of appreciation. I would like to invite Professor Sipdeep Gal, the man member of the OWSD. To present the certificate, I would like to invite Dr. Hermali Recording Salwan, in progress. of the OWSD to present the letter of appreciation. I would like to invite Ms. Injitrapa Roberu, the Assistant Secretary of the SLNC OWSD. And to present the gift, I would like to invite Dr. Chaturi as well. Dr. Chaturi Nupearachi, Madam, please come front to present the gift. Thank you very much. Yes. The gift presented by Dr. Chaturi Nupiarachi to Madam Dr. Sepalika Sudha Singha. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, there's a small announcement to be made. You have received a feedback form through your WhatsApp. I mean, there's a group or each and every participant have received uh, the feedback form, the link, the Google form. So please be kind enough to fill that form with your honest responses so that these types of conferences will be effective and fruitful in the future organized by the Sri Lanka National Chapter or WSD. So please take a couple of minutes of your time and uh, proceed with filling the Google form with your honest responses. So thanking for the same, I would like to invite for the final lecture, Senior Lecturer, the Faculty of Indigenous Medicine and Entrepreneur, Dr. Himali De Silva. She'll be talking about the potential market opportunities for the women scientists in the wellness tourism and homestay as a growing industry. So as usual, I would like to invite Dr. Thilina Vanikasekara, the President of the Sri Lanka National Chapter OWSD to read the citation of Dr. Himali De Silva. Thank you, Charita. I think uh, Director General of the National Science Foundation wanted to leave the audience. Thank you, Madam, for your presentation and all the help that you have extended for us. So with that, let me invite our final speaker for the day, not the final person of our journey, Dr. Himali De Silva, Senior Lecturer, Faculty of Indigenous Medicine, University of Colombo, as well as the entrepreneur. Her, she herself wanted to highlight that. Dr. Himali is serving as a senior lecturer for the Faculty of Indigenous Medicine, University of Colombo, since 2008. Her career started in 2005 at the National Institute of Sports Science, Ministry of Sports, as an assistant lecturer in sports physiology. Due to her keen interest in the environment, she pursued her postgraduate studies in environmental science at the University of Colombo in 2005. 
In 2006, Dr. Himali joined as a medical officer in charge to the North Central Province Department of Ayurveda, Ministry of Indigenous Medicine, Sri Lanka. During this period, she rendered her service to maximize mainly for the popularization and propagation of Ayurveda health services in war-torn areas of North Central Province. Due to her keen interest in the teaching and learning process, she joined as an academic career at the then Institute of Indigenous Medicine in 2008 and completed her doctor in medicine in Ayurveda from Baranas University, India as a candidate nominated under the Indian Cultural Exchange Scholarship in the field of Ayurveda Psychiatry. And she also held a diploma in yoga from the same university from in 2012. While incorporating her knowledge and experience in wellness tourism, as an entrepreneur, she introduced a homestay, specially called as Veli in 2018 at Navala, her residences. It runs as a family business, and the unique concept and include most of the dimensions of wellness tourism with maintaining the destination authenticity. She is a member of many professional organizations and many women organizations, especially in OWSD and women in management. Presently, she is engaging as an executive committee member and fully committed to the task disseminating Sri Lanka traditional medicine by empowering women in various dimensions. Dr. Himali, I'm very pleased to invite you for the podium. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tilina. And it's a privilege and great honor to be here uh, because many of my lecturers, uh, my teachers are there, uh, Professor Siti Madam from OUSL and Saumya Madam, as well as Swarna Madam. So I'm not uh, taking much time. Uh, this is the real uh, experience of mine. Uh, I would like to share with you. And you also can be a part of uh, this uh, industry, right? So I will ask a question before going to my uh, actual presentation. So what are the important steps when planning a trip? Okay. Destination. Okay. So, first you have to define your travel goals, right? While you are traveling. So, it can be domestic or international, right? So, you have to set a budget and uh, then you have to choose the destination. So, you have to research your destination, where to visit and what are the important places like so on. So if you are not uh, going through DMCs, so you have to create your own itinerary, which kind of activities and which kind of things you are going to involve, right? And accommodation. So you have to book transportation, health preparation. So like we experienced during past, we have to have uh, travel insurance with all health and uh, including all and you have to pack smart, right? So when it comes to the accommodation, my uh, case-based experience basically uh, based on the accommodation. So uh, if you get a travel grant, because many of academics are and high profile academics are here, so you may sometimes get uh, travel grants, then you are searching for the hotel websites for your accommodation, right? So people like us in middle level, uh, we are not getting any travel grants. So we consider any other alternative accommodation. So bed and breakfast like boutique hotels, there are so many. So under that, we have online travel agencies, right? So there are uh, popular online travel agencies like booking.com, Expedia, hotel.com, Agoda, Trip Advisor. So I have uh, highlighted Booking.com, Agoda, and Trip Advisor. These are well famous in Sri Lankan context also, right? So there are some other alternative accommodation methods known as vacation rental platforms. So like Airbnb, Vibro, 
form away because it's finding unique vacation rental or apartments right so they often provide more local and personalized experience so in that sense right uh, i have started my own uh, startup before that we will see what is the wellness tourism uh, market potential in a global level right before that in 2019 uh, you may remember that uh, we experienced a more sensitive ethnic uh, problem created after the easter attack right so but this is the world travel and tourism council report released on 2019 the wellness tourism market is one of the largest and fastest growing at that time but we were hit with the easter attack bomb so direct economic impact of the industry so including but not limited to accommodation transportation entertainment and uh, many attractions right it's you can see the uh, market it's 2.77 trillion dollars so then it comes to 2020 and 2021 we were hit by the global pandemic covid right so in 2022 the economic crisis with the fuel right so this triple hit is hugely impact to the whole tourism sector as well as the wellness tourism segment in sri lanka so but the demand in this sector was one of the hardest hit by covid pandemic leaving not only companies but also tourism driven national economics like shutdowns travel restrictions disappearance of international travel so now we are in 2023 uh recently sltd announced that december we had nearly 100000 uh arrivals to sri lanka only in december right so uh, i think this also mentioned by professor suranga travel and tourism competitive index it's 5 uh, year, uh, 15 years old so it was uh, revised uh right so this was taken by the world economic forum report so they have identified different tipping points related to tourism right you can see overcrowding unbalanced uh, distribution of travel and tourism economic benefits like so on so during 2020 and 2021 so the they were in deep engagement with all these parties so and uh the this index reform right and it reflects the growing role of sustainability resilience in the tourism and travel uh, growth right so this is the covid impact uh in uh, comparison with 2019 to 2021 so there's a decrease in 37.1% so you can see what happened due to international travel stay at uh, banding or restrictions stay at home uh, closures uh, and close their borders ban international flights like so on right so in uh, i think dr rana singh's presentation also this uh, figures were highlighted so this is the uh, present uh, global wellness economy market it's 5.6 trillion dollars in 2022 and you can see the projection in next uh, uh, in uh, 2027 up to right and uh, these are the average annual market growth recovery by sector uh, after the pandemic right so all these can be uh, freely downloaded all reports available uh, online so this is the mapping of the world wellness uh, traditions so uh, the flags countries have secured an exclusive country partnerships you can see we are not in that uh, map but india i have highlighted and circle india china thailand singapore and indonesia they are the competitors for sri lankan context right so we have to think in a different angle to promote this uh, 
section or the uh, sector in a different manner as uh, previous present also highlight. So this is the Global Wellness Economy Country Ranking uh, recently uh, published this 2021. So we are in the 64th uh, position. You can see India is in 12th position, right? So we have to think and rethink and make strategies. Some uh, uh, responsible personalities are here in ministry. So think, rethink, we can spot Sri Lanka in uh, upper index. So when uh, we think about the wellness or uh, the word, uh, many of believe that it merged from the WHO definition of health. So it, uh, they think that it comes through the well-being. Actually, the wellness is a combination of two words, well-being and fitness, right? It's wellness. So this is the recent report released this last November, Global Wellness Economy Monitor Report. You can freely download this. So according to the Global Wellness Institute, this is the uh, new, newest uh, definition for the wellness uh, tourism. The active pursuit of activities, choices, and lifestyle that lead to a state of holistic health, right? So there are many uh, subcategories under the uh, wellness tourism segment. So that is about the wellness. So now we'll move to this homestay, right? So the inter there are many definitions. So homestay refers to the practice of lodging in someone's residence for a fee alongside the family residing here, there. So while various countries employ diverse approach, right? It's different to different countries to the homestay concept. The underlying principle but remain uh, con consistent across all the nations, right? So these are the different uh, signs used globally uh, to uh, represent the uh, symbol of homestay, right? So in 2000, uh, it's uh, again redefined like specific cultural association such as private homes, interaction with a host or host family, sharing a space which thereby become public, right? Yes, yeah, yes. So it's like a, a, some kind of a, we, are, we don't know who is coming, like, we are taking kind of a stranger inside to our house, right? But there are secured uh, uh, strategies and uh, mechanisms to register and all that. So when it comes, when uh, we think about the Sri Lankan setting, in 2009, SLTDA introduced this concept, right? So, and in 2011, to take initiative to establish platform for entrepreneurs through the homestay program. So according to our uh, statistics, uh, from 2011 to 2009, the number of night international tourists stayed in Sri Lanka increased by 139% with local tourists uh, and nights by 38%. So this uh, high upsurge demand was effectively met by homestay accommodations significantly contributing to the economy, right? So basically from SMEs. So my one is like a startup. I started without, with nothing, right? So and slowly uh, became an entrepreneur, right? So it's just an idea, uh, connect with the uh, passionate about environment and my uh, basic uh, all education under Ayurveda and indigenous medicine because uh, uh, I'm, I did my BSc at OUSL. So many colleagues are now all over the world in very high positions. So they need to send their friends or their relatives to take indigenous medicine but they don't like to stay in hotels. 
right? One of my friends in Canada regularly send in some patients. So I don't have a place to uh, accommodate them. And uh, he, he is insisting me, why don't you start a place with having accommodation facilities? So discussions are going on uh, 2014 to 2017, because at that time, I'm involved uh, and committed to my uh, or institute or the faculty and dedicated in many uh, work. So I don't have my time at that time. Uh, uh, and But after some time, uh, we group as group face many problems. And there are, you know, some upsurges and downs in academic career also. So uh, many uh, my teachers, we all uh, bear our own tolerance and resistance coming from outside. So I move uh, out of the uh, institute. And 2018 is a remarkable year. I joined OWSD as well as Beam to uh, like release stress and avoid the discriminations, harassments, like, you know. Uh, so, uh, and this is the uh, remarkable discussion I made with Professor Suranga. So as uh, I'm from science field, it's very difficult to convey to Sir that uh, science or the indigenous medicine can uh, co uh, connect it to the homestay operation, right? So it's, it's a really difficult task, but anyhow, I conveyed it. And this is one of our uh, pass out doctor. Now she's uh, in uh, New Zealand. Uh, there he's, uh, she's also running some homestay kind of a thing, right? With after this discussion. So now I'm on my way to becoming successful entrepreneur uh, in 2020. Right, so this is a uh, my own concept, wellness homestay, right? Unique, uh, sustainable, small and medium entrepreneur tourism product developed by combining different concepts. One is homestay and wellness tourism, and it is also a family-owned SME, right? So main objective of this uh, to introduce the new service product of the wellness tourism industry in an aim of contributing three aspects of sustainable tourism too. So that is environment, economic and social. So we search for a place. So we plan that uh, project to be implemented. So selecting the site for homestay operation together with the family unit occupied it which can be claimed destination authenticity, including all three components of the wellness tourism, that is physical, mental, as well as uh, spiritual aspect. So we found a place behind the wetland park at Navala, Rajagiriya, Temple Road, right? So my journey started the OUSL with my fiance, now my husband, and I'm the only child in my family and I'm blessed to connect with this very traditional uh, family from Kurunagala, right? Because it, uh, we have started this with nothing, plumber, electrician uh, and sewing and all arrangement done by four of us with the help of all my extended family as well as in-laws because it worth 30 million uh, the property. So we are not financially stable uh, at that time. So all the members help us to uh, take this uh, challenge, right? Uh, and uh, and uh, one loan taken from uh, Bank of Ceylon. So anyhow, we fulfill all. And we started this place with all Sri Lankan auspicious and uh, I read the kind of norms and all, uh, and all our well-wishers are there, 
when we are starting this, right? So these are the two uh, uh, guests, uh, one from uh, Netherlands, the one family, and others from Switzerland, right? So that's how we started it. So you can see the front view before uh, we are doing all the uh, things to this place. You can see how and uh, so this is the now, uh, the current view. All these slides are solar lights, right? So we make a pebble path, right? So this is the back side. You can see it's the dump yard of all the uh, residents of at that time bringing all the garbage to backside of the this house right so we spend and this is the uh, the final view of the backyard right so how i uh, maintain the destination authenticity first by the logo right you can see the bamboo bush over there so in sanskrit uh, bamboo is velu you may remember the first offering for the lord buddha is velu anaramaya right so velu and dwara is do right i will go back uh, you can see the uh, international symbols for the home state like this right so I followed that. So any international people will recognize, sorry. So this is a homestay. And I uh, th thanks for the uh, Indigenous Medicine Institute as well as uh, the University of Colombo. I met this uh, uh, people, right? Uh, of highly professional academicians, the Professor Mahesh as uh, Professor Kotagama and Professor Ajit. They are the Professor Vipula Yapa. Uh, this is the, I was the one of the resource person to the Inventors Commission at that time to evaluate uh, indigenous uh, sector. And uh, this is one, uh, our student participate for the green inventor that at that time this photo was taken. So just uh, uh, talking with them and exchanging our ideas, uh, Professor Ajit insists me why don't you get the trademark uh, uh, from the Nepo, right? So I have applied that at that time, but I received it this year, right? It took that much of time, right? So now I have uh, Nepo uh, for my logo, right? That is how when professionals come into uh, entrepreneurship, so we are secured in many aspects. So this is uh, the site I used uh, to use Airbnb. Uh, others can use any uh, other kind of uh, online platform. So I'm giving free. You can see this is what I have given in the description of the site. So I put same. So I have only two rooms, one for my Ayurveda consultation and other two rooms for accommodation. So those who are staying at my place, I'm giving free Ayurveda consultation. I'm not charging. But conditions apply if they are taking medicines because I can't give free medicines. Uh, if they are going for therapies and all that, then they should uh, have to uh, adhere the rules. So uh, you can see uh, it's not uh, like uh, authentic, but it's contemporary uh, combining both what we have, right? These are uh, not uh, by uh, to run the business. Whatever we had at that time, we used all uh, refurbish and uh, reuse all the things there, right? So when uh, uh, in the context, uh, we Whenever possible, we try to maintain authenticity. When purchasing and sales food and beverages, I use uh, like local, eco-friendly and fair trade suppliers. So you can see uh, this uh, different kind of flour made by our own uh, Vattaka, Rajala and all. 
she is a also entrepreneur so now these are going all over the world because i am using for my guests so they are asking and they are taking those to the uh, their countries also you can see these spices it's uh, produced by our pass out doctor candy and spices so i used to take all that spices and others are you know our own uh, backyard home garden right this uh, yam you can see the rajala and kesel uh, and this is the gooseberry uh, so i prepared jam and chutneys and all uh, from uh, all these fruits right so uh, for the food serving uh, used to always uh, try to uh, made it from renewable resources or recycled materials and reduce plastic so use natural material food serving utensils so it's all almost from the uh, other entrepreneurs and i have uh, two uh, they are no more kids they are uh, my uh, two boys my two i have two so they are not in a like kind of a formal uh, <laughs> way so they also like uh, out of box thinkers so they also start a business within my business uh, producing uh, veludwara eco products that is uh, sorry uh, led bulbs so i also have to purchase from him to put the bulbs and uh, the smaller one is preparing different kind of uh, uh, souvenirs from bamboo right uh, so i have to purchase from him and give as a souvenir to my guest right so all involved so and practicing 3r principle to minimize the waste so we segregate the waste and from the plastic and all other polythene stuff they used to prepare this eco bricks and sell to the uh, green uh, good market over here right because we cannot uh, prohibited use uh, polythene because they are coming from uh, other countries so they have all sometimes and they refuse to use uh, filtered uh, water they need water bottles so sprite and all that and we are bringing all the cleaning uh, stuff so i we reuse uh, in the home gardening purpose at my terrace right so the for the organic waste part we converted to the compost and other we created biogas so i can save my gas cylinder for two and a half months uh, with all these uh, and we are using our, uh, the charcoal and this uh, burner is also sri lankan product the uh, one involved with the inventors commission when i uh, connect with that uh, commission uh, he bring this to uh, for taking the grant from uh, commission so he has some additional uh, burner so for health i have taken one so it's also nearly 8 years old now i am using it with this uh, charcoal and so we are using a uh, solar hot water and we have a small panel to store solar energy so during the power cut we had last year we saved because we used it for uh, wifi as well as for uh, the the most used uh, lights right you can see i think one comment from host because the international guest need high speed wifi uh, nothing else because they need to connect with their countries and uh, so you can see the the great host and felt at home even during no electricity we were able to accommodate basic needs right so this one is from canada uh, but uh, sri lankan uh, coming for a vacation so when it comes to the water so we uh, think about the conservation include includes 
reducing water usage through simple measures. So we have a separate, uh, different uh, uh, system adhere to the uh, bar, uh, washroom and bathroom because we have the lake over there. So we are not re, um, uh, discarding all that water through the water body. So we filtered and we have a separate uh, system to uh, that. And we are not uh, uh, promoting uh, use, uh, uh, single use this uh, plastic bottles and uh, other uh, plastic bo water bottles. So we keep uh, two kind of uh, water filters to their use. And even for gardening, we are not using purified water coming through the taps, right? We use the lake water for gardening with a different kind of a pump. Uh, our uh, two uh, kids or man used to this, right? And there are many day-to-day uh, -day use medicinal plants at the backside. The first one is uh, pipili. Uh, second one is lunuvila. And the other one is ahala. So we have bee house also. Last year, we had one uh, community there. Uh, so with all these, so some uh, Dr. Rana Singh proposed some uh, uh, activities uh, in his project. So I'm practicing it in a very uh, basic level with my guest. Right. So these are the authentic food, many from my garden. Right. And uh, different kind of uh, therapy, like color therapy. You can see, right? I have Neil Katarolu Velak, right? So I use that dye to give different kind of colors to food. And we are, while having, we are discussing all food culture and all, uh, and exchanging all the knowledge with our guest. Uh, and we also update what, happening in their countries also, right? So you can see, and the, the below uh, tray is uh, uh, prepared according to Ayurveda principles. Uh, I'm involved with this uh, postgraduate uh, tourism and hospitality uh, study program. So we have some connection with our student. So this was sold to the uh, Russian uh, group uh, Pratibani knows well, uh, one of our students. So he asked me to prepare this and he sold this for $80. Right? So not only that, so we are responsible and we are doing the social contribution. So we did one uh, uh, homestay workshop in 2018, June, 9, uh, June. So, and we uh, write paper articles on that. So, this is the uh, lady uh, who he, actually she's the founder uh, of the homestay industry in Sri Lanka. Uh, she's the mother of uh, Mr. Amal Nanayakara, who's the one of the legend in uh, involving in tourism industry. Uh, not only that. So we disseminate knowledge and we got some uh, orders to prepare biogas uh, uh, units, right? So it goes to my uh, kids, right? So they are doing all this and we shared our knowledge with different forums. So at the beginning, as a startup, I don't have any uh, web, right? Now... We are technologically connecting. So this is my web. Uh, you can see I have one uh, bad review at the beginning. That's why I have 4.5 stars because initially we don't have nothing, right? So uh, others all put five stars. You can see only one uh, bad review. That is because of the starting of my uh, home stay, right? So this is uh, the website as well as the Airbnb. And I will share some interesting uh, stories. 
this is this message is during the covid period you can see joe from melbourne he won't be staying but just want to support the sri lankan tourism industry during these hard times currently so he booked our place and deposited money but he didn't come for stay right so that kind because uh, we were uh, known by this uh, australian community because many uh, people stayed at our place so they promote our place within their uh, communities so they thought that we don't have any guest so they help at that time right so these are the another interesting uh, stories uh, subaru uh, he's a uh, original indian guy uh, you may remember during covid indian uh, border is closed but we ask them to come sri lanka and quarantine and they can uh, fly to other countries so he came to sri lanka but then the second wave started we were banned so he he was stuck in sri lanka so he was with us uh, nearly 6 months uh, sorry one and a half months right and i had that privilege we can go to the quarantine centers because my husband worked for rupwahini so media and both we can go and take those because they can afford money during that period to quarantine in hotel sector only for a short period because it's really expensive so when they search uh, because my one is specifically indicated that uh, are you ready and all that so they connected with us and asked can we stay in your place because i am from india i like to get uh, any preventive measures uh, uh, whatever you prescribe uh, in ayurveda medicine so we uh, take him to our uh, place so this upali and uh, udit and all are uh, sri lankan but uh, live in uh, canada australia and some other places so you can see how we get Uh, feedback uh, through them right so they these are the uploaded photos by our guest so this is one interesting uh, another story ruyo from china her fiance is from india so they cannot uh, uh, marry in their country because rules are highly restricted and uh, but they can uh, marry in sri lanka so we have to follow the sri lankan rules and you know we like learning everything if this guest starts that kind of thing this is also during covid so ruyo got uh, dengue attack as well as covid but for both she underwent my treatment right so uh, we are the uh, the the both uh, sign for their marriage in sri lanka and uh, this is how we interact with her and she contributed to the sri lankan university uh, teaching learning process also i am working with japur tourism so they have uh, organized uh, one event called chinese language power in last year november so she voluntarily involved with that education program and uh, teach chinese to the students who are following the uh, tourism degree program so now she is coming again in january uh, now we build the uh, repetition channel right so no uh, marketing nothing now uh, after 5 years we are getting the same uh, guest with our good hospital hospitality so this is one interesting thing due to the opportunities uh, given by professor suranga we were asked to write one chapter to the emerald publishing this will be published on next year we did this during uh, uh, covid so two two chapters uh, one is uh, community community based tourism in changing economy in case of sri lanka uh, and in chapter 20 wellness tourism after pandemic real experience of wellness tourism after the pandemic in sri lankan context so that's how uh, professionals or academics involved 
in uh, the entrepreneur, this kind of. And this is the recent uh, experience I like to share with you. Our place recognized by Koika project. I don't know how. Uh, so this person came to Madam uh, Open University Social Science Faculty to teach Korea, uh, sorry, Korean to our student. So she was with us and uh, the Koika project directly, I, I don't know whether you can see, they have sent this guideline for us. She was, uh, he was with us for two years. So now uh, slowly we are recognizing because we are practicing it in a well-mannered, uh, involving all the concept. So you can see uh, all these are Sri Lankan authentic food, right? So this is uh, Murunga in the upper, right? And uh, the other one is uh, Tosi. Right. So, uh, due to Professor Ajit, uh, sir, and uh, Miss Vindya, and all that, so I am uh, uh, connecting with uh, earlier. It, it was known as Costi, now National Innovation Agency. They have uh, uh, run a uh, webinar series, Innovation and Entrepreneurship Mentoring Program for Sri Lankan Women. So I was in that program also. So recently they invited uh, to participate International Trade Center uh, Festival, but uh, I have fulfilled all, but except 35 years old uh, age barrier, right? Now I am uh, over 45 also. So uh, 2023 way forward, so, uh, this is uh, uh, after many administrative process. I have taken the uh, registration. Uh, Dr. Vanor is here. He helped me very uh, well in this. And now I, I am the registered person in homestay operation in SLTDA site. And the big achievement with the sustainable tourism unit, I'm working with the uh, Dr. Uh, Pratibhani uh, and Professor Suranga. Uh, so this is uh, implement. Uh, I think Dr. Taranga asked that question from sir, uh, how the sustainability measured. So this is the uh, newest uh, implementation done in Sri Lanka. So it's uh, they are identifying green destinations. So I also applied. Uh, so I shortlisted. Uh, and uh, last month, the auditors came to audit. So uh, maybe I will get the certificate, hopefully. Uh, so uh, it's free for the first time, right? Uh, it worth uh, nearly 200,000, right? So because uh, in, near, in future, uh, tourists won't come to Sri Lanka if you are not practicing sustainable tourism practices. So this will, I think, announce uh, from your side, uh, Ms. Savitri. So this is another happening in my personal life, 360 turn. So uh, he's uh, my uh, uh, sister and uh, brother-in-law. He's the former ENT surgeon to the Navala Pitya and Gampala. And my sister is uh, work for agriculture. And they all uh, give up all the physical things and uh, bounds. And so they are also involved with us in the business, right? So now uh, they are no more. So there's a huge uh, responsibility for me to look after my uh, in-laws, right? Mother and mother-in-law and father-in-law. But I'm I'm a like a I'm like a daughter, and I'm blessed to have that kind of a family. So now we are more towards to uh, uh, spiritual and psychological aspect of the wellness tourism, because they are from Kudurangala near uh, uh, the Rakawa. So like uh, 
Dr. Anasinghe said that uh, the Aduma Gurutva Karshane Tinawagi, this is like uh, known as Yakdesa Gala uh, and uh, Latoni Gala. The people believe that Kueni jumped from this uh, mountain. So my husband's all properties near to this Yadvesa Gala. So we are now planning to convert some uh, properties to ashram kind of uh, wellness state, mainly focused spiritual and fo uh, psychological because it's near uh, this tank and all that. So, and we are talking with some investors. Uh, if that works, sometimes I may leave the university system and fully engage with all this. Uh, I don't know what happened. Uh, so, that's my experience with this wellness day. And uh, in future, uh, uh, Sustainable Tourism Unit of University of Colombo plan to uh, run some uh, program related to homestay operation. So if you are like uh, to that, you can uh, request or send uh, email to the Sustainable Tourism Unit email. Uh, in next year action plan, we have that. Right? And we have a separate certificate course in Sustainable Tourism Certification and training uh, green destination leaders uh, like such kind of work and if you need to develop or uh, some kind of places uh, so consultancy also uh, given by SPU unit. So thank you for listening. Ah? No, no. <laughs> so that is my experience. Uh, so I came on board as a profession, academic and as a I read the practitioner. So you can use, because we know on, only to sell our knowledge, what we gain for many years. So we can earn passive money uh, with very simple and without uh, taking any or invest any capital because you may have large houses, definitely more than 1,500 square feet. And some parts you may not utilize. Rooms are closed. Some you are uh, or relatives or may uh, outside the country. So you can come into this homestay operation with your own abilities as well as uh, maintaining the destination authenticity. And you can contribute to the Sri Lankan economy with earning foreign currencies. So thank you. Thank you very much, Madam. Dr. Himaladi Silva, the senior lecturer of the Faculty of Indigenous Medicine, University of Colombo, and a well-known, experienced entrepreneur. So, Madam, uh, to present the token of appreciation, I would like to invite you, Madam, to present the token of appreciation to Dr. Himal de Silva, I would like to invite Professor Tharanga Thoradeniya, Madam, please grace the occasion, and to present the certificate, Professor Usha Hetiarachi, Madam, I would like to invite you as well. Dr. Ureshani Karunaratna, Madam, and to present the letter of appreciation, I would like to invite Dr. Hermali Silva, the Vice President of SLNC, and to present the gift, Dr. Thilna Vanikasekar, Madam, I kindly invite you. Thank you very much. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the end of the annual conference for 2023 Sri Lanka National Chapter.
OWSD. Ladies and gentlemen, we had a great time. We had many sessions and thank you very much for creating this occasion and being here from the very beginning. So we had some fruitful, interesting, insightful sessions, Q&A sessions, and moreover, we gained practical insights through the keynote speakers. And we have a few individuals to felicitate with. So I cordially invite uh, to join the presentation party, Dr. Saumya Kumari, the senior lecturer of Faculty of Indigenous Medicine, University of Colombo, Madam Dr. Sulochana Segera, Dr. Tirena Vaniga Sekara, Dr. Himal Di Silva, Dr. Chaturi Nupiarachi, and Dr. Padmasiri Pranasinghe. Please join the presentation party, sir. So I would like to first invite Dr. Shehan Jasuria to receive the token of appreciation. And Dr. Anusara Jayavira. And uh, to keep the camera aside, Dr. Timira Dananjay. Dr. Ishan Das Disanayaka. And finally, Dr. Kushani Fernando as well. Thank you, Charita, but it is not the final. Dr. Charita Minipurarachi, for your token, you can take from one of our panelists. Thank you all. Again, I'm inviting you, Charita, to continue the final words. Thank you very much, Madam. So uh, we have come to the end of the chapter 2023. We'll be proceeding forward in the next year and with some wonderful and insightful, interesting sessions in the future as well to add the concluding remarks and to propose the vote of thanks. I would like to invite the secretary of the Sri Lanka National Chapter of OWSD, Dr. Chaturi Nopiharachi. Madam, it's over to you. Thank you, Charita. Uh, good evening, everybody. I'm so glad to be with you all today right throughout this conference. But ladies and gentlemen, all good things should come to an end. So we have come to the end of this particular conference. And as the secretary of SLNC OWSD, I would like to thank few parties. Uh, Professor Anjit Sena Ratna, chairman, uh, Dr. Sepalika Gunsudasinghe, director general, and the staff of NSF for the collaborative effort uh, shown here in this particular conference. As well as I'm thankful to OWSD main organization for the given financial support and National Academy of Sciences Sri Lanka for the role played as our umbrella organization. So my heartfelt gratitude goes to our resource persons for this valuable effort and informative uh, content in knowledge sharing as well. And I'm thankful to our distinguished invitees of this occasion for showing their keen interest. And I wish to thank our OWSD XCOM members who provided advices, encouragement, and behind the scenes support. Especially, I'm thankful to the leadership of SLNC OWSD President, Dr. Tilina Vanigasekara. You are our pillar of success. So also, I would like to mention the hard work of Dr. Himali De Silva as the treasurer and Ms. Indra Chapa Ruberu as the assistant secretary uh, as well. And also, I'm happy to see the enthusiastic approach of both online and physical participants in this conference. 
In addition, the support given by the students of FIM, University of Colombo, is remarkable, ladies and gentlemen. Last but not least, a big thank you goes to a couple of parties. They are Mr. Charita Minipurarachi for comparing this conference, Cat Code 27 for capturing the sweet memories, uh, Russell Caterers for the good quality food, and Cat uh, Code 27 again for the printed work done within a very short period of time. And uh, finally, I would like to uh, make a small kind request from everybody to provide a feedback uh, by uh, provide us your honest feedback by filling out our feedback form, which has been sent via WhatsApp to everybody, and in some cases via emails. And um, to wrap up the presentation and wrap up the wonderful conference, ladies and gentlemen, I wish you a very pleasant evening, but don't forget, we'll meet you in another exciting episode back in 2024. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, madam. So uh, with that, we'll be concluding today's event, the formal event, 2023 conference, ladies and gentlemen. Just a kind reminder again, to make fruitful future events, we value your honest responses, feedbacks. Just kindly fill out if you have not. And just a kind reminder, stay connected because without connections, without having relationships without having some sort of communication, we can't move forward. So to be successful, to be forward enough to reach our goals and perspectives, stay connected for a better future. Thank you very much. Refreshments are ready. Recording stuff. Recording stuff.